for play presented by Barstool Sports. We got the entire crew here, myself, Trent, Frankie, Lurch. We're joined by two very special guests throughout this show. In theory, we haven't recorded with him yet, which is always a little bit dangerous. But we have Sam Burns, the most recent winner on the PGA Tour, and Colt Nost, who was a very big topic of discussion on the last show. We'll be joining this show um, very soon. I just said show like 5,000 times, it feels like. But, uh, gents, hello. How are you? How, how are we feeling? Great. Excited about what might transpire tonight if I'm there. But I think you know, I'm just excited for the day. Yeah. I, I'm in Boston. <laughs> that, Why are you right? in Boston, Trent? Because, so I'm doing the Chicks in the Office live show. I'm the surprise guest for their first live show tonight. And we can talk about it right now because this will air tomorrow. And the show is tonight, so people will know that I'm here. But I'm in Boston. I'm in a very nice hotel by the water. And we're doing a live show tonight at a bar. It's my first live show ever. It's their first live show ever, I'm pretty sure. So I'm here as the special guest as the luggage guy. And I'm going to go out on stage during the show. And and we're going to talk about whatever we're going to talk about. He's the panty dropper is what he is. He's going to walk out (laughs) 45 minutes into the show. The place is going to go fucking bonkers. Bunch of females screaming at the top of their lungs. Breasts will probably be exposed. I mean, the whole thing. It's that's just that's the world Trent lives in when he gets off this golf course. When he gets off this golf podcast, the second he takes off those those Peter Millar five pocket pants and exchanges them for his khakis and his black um, crew neck Carhartt sweater, he is a panty dropper, uh, pussy wetter. It's just, I mean, I'm sorry Jesus. for the language. I'm sorry for the language. It's just that's what happens, Trent. You are you. You're this. You're this. You're this god. You're this demigod that walks out on the stage of the of all these females that love the Bachelor, the Bachelorette, the Bachelor in Paradise. You've got them hook, line, and sinker, man. There's no there's no two ways about it. You can't deny it. it I do it, wonder how many of the people who listen to this show know about like my second family because I know that like the chicks in the office fans they they just refer to this podcast and all of the videos we do and all the work that we do just as the golf stuff that I sometimes have to miss recaps for. Like when we were at Abandon and then we were at the Ryder Cup, I couldn't do recaps for two weeks. And they were like, oh, he's just off doing golf stuff when it's actually, there's a lot more to it than that. But I, I wonder, the, the people who listen to this show, if they, I'm sure some of them know, maybe even the majority of them know that I'm very much into The Bachelor, very much into that world. And I like recapping it. I like live tweeting it. I've been on it as the luggage guy. I have this whole other second family, like I said. Do you, do you think there's a good amount of them that assumes you're just sick at golf, Trent, because you do all the golf stuff? 100%. Yeah, <laughs> they just think that's... that yeah. If if I play the game and I do this podcast professionally, I must have some sort of skill in the game of golf. Which You're strong boy he probably hits the ball <laughs> right. far. He's As the straight. listeners of this show know, it, we just went through a painstaking series of me trying to get over a golf barrier that most people do in their early teens. And they loved that also. If they got a glimpse of that, they loved every second of it. Trent was also. I mean, all the females of the golf world came out of the woodworks for Trent's breaking 100 series. The guy is. He has the world in the palm of his hand right now, and I would argue that everything that he's ever done with his hashtag Bachelor tweets have led to this moment where he's about to walk onto the stage for this pop. I think that this has been the goal of our own Trent Ryan that one day he would cash in to be. I mean. I don't even know who you can compare this to. That pop that you're gonna get tonight is comparable to what's that? Um, what's that? What's that like? Um, Asian pop group, the um, BTS. The BTS. When like you ever see the fucking videos of these guys yeah. stepping off fucking planes and people legitimately like go into cardiac arrest. It's like the Beatles yeah. when they came to Shea Stadium. Uh, that's what's gonna happen tonight for Trent, and you can't replicate that anywhere, even when. Well- even when we're at like pop punk, it's still a bunch of dudes like we want to listen to '90s music. Like, well, dude, you're man, t- you're about to fucking to change be, the world tonight. To be clear, we're not <laughs> performing at the Boston Garden. Like, it's not gonna be it a million matter. people there. Like, you're, you're like acting it. like I'm gonna be walking out like John Cena a couple like a month ago, where they're like, "Oh my god, there's gonna it's gonna be a it's a smaller crowd." We're yeah, but let's be here clear York. here. Let's be clear here. At Barcelona Sports, right? If we get some public recognition, it's great. But I would say, what, 93% of our followers are dudes? Bunch of dudes going, this is awesome. (laughs) Bro, you're the man, which is great. And we love it. really cool. That's who we are. What's your favorite course you played? And we'll go into it all day. We have a great time. Tell me about those irons. Yeah. Where, where, where's Do you have Dave Big at? Cat's number in your phone? <laughs> How much does Big Cat make? Where's Dave? 
Like, yeah, no, it's a lot of that. And I'm they're cool, the and we have a great David time. Come with me to get the bagels. And it morning. gives us a really cool life, and it's the best. But it's not like we're we're not these rocks. We don't get this female pop. If you're a heterosexual male and you're into females, that's a foreign concept for us to get that kind of recognition from a certain part of the human species. Now we've got Trent Ryan is going to walk out there at this chicks in the office, the Cedo crowd. And you're going to wow this crowd because this Crazy. guy that is the the male leader for bachelor coverage in the United States of America is going to drag <laughs> a piece of fucking luggage onto the stage in Boston. That's my and favorite people are going to go crazy. He's going to walk in with luggage. I mean, they're going to ask to get in the <laughs> luggage and you take them out with you. It's just, it, bro, I don't care if you played this in the back alleyway. The fact that we have a guy from foreplay representing our brand going out there and doing what you're going to do tonight is huge for us. Like yeah. the fact that we have one fourth of this podcast, getting a pop from an all female audience is unprecedented. Like show me another podcast. Right. And I don't want to get, I'm going to, I don't want to name names. I mean, Colt knows is about to come on our show and he's about to talk a bunch of analytics and stats and talk about X's and O's when it comes to PGA tour. Show me a Colt knows podcast, right? Since we are friendly with him, I'm not going to name the other ones. That can get that can have one of their hosts show up to a fucking live show and have 150 screaming women go fucking go crazy for the guy. All right, that's a sleeve. That's a card that we've had our up our sleeve that no one else saw coming. You know, when they're doing all their fucking things and they're doing oh how are we gonna beat foreplay? Oh my god, did you see what they did in Boston last night? Trent walked on the fucking stage and and they had to mop the <laughs> floors. They had, they, oh there was a slippery Jesus. every every table had a slippery when wet sign next to it. You're being very nice, but you're also making me super nervous. No, it's a it's a huge It'll night not just for you. It's it's a huge night for us. You know, like when that video goes live, when that video goes live of that pop, I will tweet it at like, I'll, I'll subtweet it at all of our competitors and be like, find you another golf podcast host that can get this pop. Find you another golf podcast host that can get this pop. You better get the pop now. The pressure is That's on. what I'm you see. This is why you're making me nervous. They might, I might walk out there with my luggage and, and, and whatever. They're just gonna be like. Ooh. Dude, you said you're going out to the '90s Bulls entrance song. Yeah, the yeah, Chicken Office producer great. Noah made uh, made like a hype video that's like 20 <laughs> seconds long that has the Bulls, the the greatest NBA dynasty, <laughs> and like the greatest athlete who Lurch had lunch with recently. Oh. Um, their music. So it's it's I don't know. I, I'm you're making me more nervous by the second, but I am very excited. Um. Owens Mixers. So they do foreplay coverage. Uh, they support foreplay very aggressively and very passionally. And they also support um, Chicks in the Office, a lot of your guys' bachelor recaps and whatnot. So basically they just follow Trent all around this country. Um, Owens Mixers pouring you know, their d- delightful flavors in with liquor and then just making awesome cocktails. Uh, I want you guys to look at what I'm holding right here, especially the guy with the melon hat on. And, and what can you do with this right here, uh, melon favorite. hat guy? You can make an upper echelon cocktail. Had a few Ooh. of them this past week. Mix that beautiful uh, drink with either tequila or vodka. And you've got yourself a Greyhound or a Paloma. And uh, yeah, a grapefruit with lime. It's fresh, delicious, and just tasty. Dude, I had um, I had some tequila the other night. So Good man. Uh, it, MB and Kelsey, who we work with, everybody knows there, they were in town scouting some stuff down in Tucson. They asked me if I wanted to grab dinner before they caught a red eye home. So I went by this place, um, Diego Pops, it's called, which I'd never been to before. And the GM there um, was a big fan. And he's like, dude, you want a shot of tequila? So he brought over this bottle of this tequila right here. Is that a turtle? He said it's pretty. Is that not it's Perez's pretty, bottle? Perez has something similar. I thought it was really similar, so I sent it to PP. And PP's like, no, I never heard of that. Dude, every bottle that this company makes is handcrafted. They handcraft every single bottle. And it's like a local tequila. It was un. Looks really good. I also just started laughing as all three of us just started leaning right into the. Yeah, exactly. Was as that? As was that? <laughs> hey, what's on the screen? Yeah, that, that so, looks like a very nice tequila bottle. Point is, you can get um, whether you got good tequila, good vodka, good anything. You pour it in with uh, little Owens mixers, and now all of a sudden you've got an elite, elite cocktail. You can go to. 
um, owensmixers.com. Check out their store locator. You figure out where you can go pick this stuff up. You can use Amazon. You get next day shipping. You can use the uh, what's the what's the one? I don't know what it is. GoPuff. GoPuff. Go, GoPuff, and they do same day shipping. Uh, and then you can also go check out. Um, I believe CVS's are known to have them. Kroger's are known to have them. A lot of places are known to have it. So OwensMixers.com, they're fantastic. Big thanks to Owens for all of their support. I, I got to give a, a re, um, not a recap, but I need to extend the story. What's the word I'm looking for? Update. I got an update. I have an update Jesus on the uh, – Jesus Christ is right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I gotta extend this story. I need to I've... extend the information on this story. <laughs> you know, I it's, it's actually what you do when you update someone. You extend the story that you previously had said. Amazing, um, dude. The Michael Jordan story that I had of um, the Unreal CEO, the guy who's at the helm of Unreal UNRL um, clothing. His name is Michael Jordan. He texted me after he heard the podcast, and he just goes, "You bastard! I've been dealing with this my whole life." Um, he got a really big, he got a good kick out of our story about like, you know, how the fact, how the fuck can you be called Michael Jordan? Um, he says like his mom just really loved the name Michael. And obviously like, I, I would assume Michael Jordan was like, maybe, maybe barely in the league at that time. I don't know. The guy's pretty young, but she said that like, Oh, he'll just be a flash in the pan athlete. Like no one like, whatever. It's not <laughs> wrong on that one. Uh, Mrs. Jordan, oh. but his buddy James reached out to me. And goes, uh, MJ from uh, Unreal is my best friend, and we take a trip to Sage Valley every year. Last year, there were like nine caddies waiting around his bag on our first day because they heard it's a PXG bag with the name Michael Jordan on it. I, what's happening? Oh, shit. Oh, cool. Colt that just oh, joined in. Here. What's up? Anyway, the finishing point to that Hold story is, is that all these caddies are waiting for Michael Jordan to show up, and it's the unreal clothing Michael Jordan, and they all walked away, and one guy actually said, God damn it, and he just walked away. And like, didn't, he like didn't have a caddy at Sage Valley, so I mean, that's just a tough life to live when your name is Michael Jordan and you're not the guy. Colt's got Michael Jordan uh, hat on. I Jump wore it for Lurch today. <laughs> we were just telling a story. Uh, you heard of the Unreal Company, uh, UNRL. They, they're like a Minnesota company. They make a bunch of apparel, hoodies, and stuff. They're pretty new. But the owner of the company's name is Michael Jordan. Oh, wow. So we were talking yeah, we talk about him last time and all the shit that he gets in for basically being called Michael Jordan. Well, he signs yeah. his text like MJ. It's just I just don't think Love he can that. do that. He just can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's too ballsy. <laughs> um, JT's old caddy, Jimmy Johnson, he, he lives in Dallas. And he's like, dude, in the 90s, I never had a tr- trouble getting a dinner reservation. We <laughs> talked about him on the last show. Yeah, I'm Jimmy Johnson. Well, we said when you hear Jimmy Johnson, do you immediately think of the coach or do you think of the driver? I think of the coach because I'm a cowboy guy. Yeah, I actually grew yeah, up in Cowboys, Dallas so I think, of, I think of him as uh, the coach as well, for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, we got Colt Nose on the show. I have a whole intro ready for you, Colt Nose. Oh, this is going to um, be good. <laughs> he is, if you're not familiar with Colt, uh, this is a golf podcast that so you should be, and maybe you became very familiar with him last show when he was discussed at length. Uh, host of Subpar with Sleaze, Drew Stoltz, who's a good buddy of uh, mine now here in Scottsdale, despite Colt trying to thwart um, those types of things ever happening. Gravy and the Sleaze, they're on Sirius. We used to be on Sirius as well, um, but that got canceled, so now we're not. Recently inducted into the SMU Golf Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Colt. Thank you. Much appreciated. Won three USGA events in 2007, joining Bobby Jones, who did it in 1930, and Jay Sigel, who did it in 1983, is the only players ever to do so. CBS on-course reporter. You were also on an incredible 2007 Walker Cup team with Ricky Fowler, Dustin Johnson, Webb Simpson, and Billy Horschel. And you guys at Royal County Down took down Roy McElroy and company. And then you introduced Lurch to both Michael Jordan and <laughs> Bud Cauley in the very same day. Welcome <laughs> to the show, Colt Nost. Thank you, guys. Have yourself a day, Lurch. Huh? What a weekend we had. Yeah, it was insane. Kept going. I, you know, just Patriots game and then Red Sox game last night with the Yanks. The Yanks got absolutely shellacked. But yeah, it's been uh, it's been a hell of a week. So, anyways, thanks for the the invites and uh, appreciate the chirp of me know not me knowing nothing about the game of golf. Well, um, did, I mean, I always thought I had it pretty good until this last weekend for you. I mean. You get to you topped it off with the Patriots and the Red Sox games. Yeah, that was cool. Unbelievable. Cool I, had to, cool. I had to come home and work. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys know each other at all before the trip? No. no. That was the first meeting. And, you know, I listened to the, the podcast 
the other the other day, and I would say I would say some is true, some is not quite all the way true. But either way, I had a blast with Lurch Briggs. You know, I always have fun with you here in Scottsdale, Frankie. I didn't know you'd get so sensitive about all this. We'll talk about that <laughs> later, I'm sure. But I, in all honesty, like I'm a big fan of you guys. Y'all are great for the game of golf. I just like to joke around and say y'all don't know shit about the game of golf, which might be true, might not be. I know that's not what y'all's podcast is about, but y'all have done awesome stuff for the game of golf. So congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I want to let Frankie I... accept that compliment. <laughs> I would like to know what was inaccurate. Oh. I did not say he would not remember you. MJ. Oh, uh, that part. See, that, 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 part see, that I actually, I, here's what I'm going to say. And I didn't want to get into it with, with Lurch because he sometimes like will come back at me and say, like, my family should die when I say one thing about him. But <laughs> I've never said no, that. No, but like, you like, you always take things like 10 times meaner. My, my <laughs> thing is. My thing is, I Cole, thought we, Cole, we got Cole. We got enough problems on the show, I, as you can my, see. My, my, <laughs> but I was gonna say when he was when, when Lurch was talking about the story and he was he was retelling it was that he was actually painting you, I think, in a in a worse light by saying that part that you just said is probably inaccurate because it's like, oh, he's not gonna remember you like that. Like that part to me was like, oh, we have to have this guy on to make sure that that's true. Cool. What did you say there? I'd said the, the whole pitcher thing, because we were talking about it during the day. The only thing I said was the pitcher thing is like, he immediately thinks you're just a fan. Fanboy. And yeah, I, if, I, if, I stepped on the grenade being a beta. Like listen, I was like with. I'll be totally know, honest. The first time I met him, I asked for a pitcher. So well, there you go. I think Maybe if you develop into a friendship, you know what I mean? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> also, if you have lunch with Michael Jordan or you meet him and you don't take a picture and you tell people about what happened, they're going to think you're lying. A lie. 100%. That's a great point. I'm already gaining points for Colt. I mean, he took a picture of Michael Jordan. Like everything that we assumed of him is now like incorrect. Where like he was too cool mm -hmm. to take the picture with MJ. Like, uh, we had this whole debate about like, oh, if you want to continue to be friends with them and like have all these lunches with them, like no, he's just a he's like the same as us. That would he would take a picture first time he meets him. Well, I mean, growing up, I mean, obviously I'm not an NBA expert or anything, but I think like all of us, I mean, I'm 36 years old. MJ was the guy. I mean, I had every jersey, every pair of shoes. And I, I was a fan. There's no doubt in the fact like that I got to meet Michael Jordan. I've played golf with him probably a dozen times. Is like I just pinch myself every time. Like just walking up and having lunch with him the other day. If I didn't have about four transfusions in me, I probably would have been a little more nervous than you know just hanging out with an, another normal guy. At the end of the day, it's still Michael Jordan, and it's still the coolest thing ever that you get to have a relationship with him and get to hang out with him. It's always weird. Like you don't want to. Like on one level, you do want to treat anyone like they're just a normal person, but on somebody like that level, it's gotta be almost impossible to treat MJ like a normal human being or treat him like one of your buddies. Yeah, there, it really is. I mean, it's, it's well, so recognizable. He's not yeah. like, you know, Bud Pauly or anything like that. You just know <laughs> who it is. So, you know, I was treating Bud just like your normal guy. Yeah. I tell you, I'll tell you my biggest, you know, panic I always have when, you know, Riggs, you and I go out and we get after it a little bit and, which I like to do on weekends anyway, but you know, sometimes you have a little too many. You don't remember what you do the night before. The worst thing the next day is waking up and seeing that you called MJ in the middle of the night. That is full panic, full sweat. I'm just like, why? Like, why? How often does that happen? Cole? Cole, no, how often does that happen? It's, it's happened a couple of times throughout the years of knowing him. And I'm just like, Jesus, stop it. You're an idiot. Does he, does he answer? Uh, he's answered like once or twice. Not very often does he answer. Normally it's I'm in Vegas. And I run into one of his buddies and we call him and it's midnight in Vegas. and It's three o'clock in the morning in Florida. So he's not awake. Do you like you, FaceTime him? I think I definitely have. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. I don't you think Mark. You're, you're closer with Michael Jordan than I think everyone assumed. At least me. That's close. Well, if you're FaceTiming well, him at two in the morning. If I didn't make it clear, I mean, Colt like was like texting him like when we were playing golf, trying to work out this lunch. And then, yeah. then it was like confirmed when we we're on like maybe the 15th or 16th hole. The Cole was like, yeah, he's actually coming up here for lunch. Like, we're going to meet him in a second. And, yeah, I mean, Colt's out right next. I mean, like, they're, like, <laughs> without question, they know each other pretty well. So, <laughs> that's like, awesome. That's astonishing. That's all right. There's a lot of trash talking that goes on, which it's not a really a fair fight. I mean, God, look at him and look at me. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but that is your – that is your MO. That's – and and – like Lurch found out, you just run your mouth. That's what you like to do. And it was hard for us on this show to like convey in the story. Like, no, Colt just, that's just, he just busts balls 24 mm -hmm. 7, 365. That's all he does. Cause when you're trying to, it's almost like on Twitter, like sarcasm doesn't translate on Twitter. It's very similar 
when you're trying to like tell about somebody else, like, no, he wasn't that serious. And it's like, no, but you just told me what he said to the other person. That sounds like he was being me in reality. It's like, no, Colt just doesn't shut the fuck up. And he's chirping people in, in their ear the entire time from start to finish. You know, you guys are hockey guys, and I play golf with a lot of the hockey guys here, and we, we talk about that all the time. They're like, you can be kind of like you can be kind of an asshole on the golf course. I'm like, dude, I'm this little short fat guy that doesn't have a whole lot of talent. I mean, I gotta make up for it somewhere else. So I just try to chirp you to death. Like, I mean, when I played on tour, I played with a chip on my shoulder. I'm obviously one of the shortest guys out there. Like, I had to have a little meanness to me, or I never would have made it, in my opinion. So it just kind of relates. Like, once we get out on the golf course. That's my deal. I love to chirp you. I love to talk shit because one, I know I'm better than you. And two, I try to make you uncomfortable because I want to win at the end of the day. It very much reminds me of Kiz. Kiz is <laughs> almost identical that way where it's but like. He's got a lot more talent. <laughs> he's well got like, yes. the same And that's why me and him get along so good yeah. too. Yeah. It's very reminiscent of that. It's like you guys just like to make people uncomfortable and it can come off to the wrong person of like. Sometimes, like, man, he's being a real dickhead. It's like, no, yeah. he just runs his mouth. And that's how he's wired because of whatever reason. It's probably similar to you. 100%. And, I mean, that's why Kiz is one of my favorites. Pat Perez, one of my favorites. I mean, it's just – I think that's that's the deal. And, I, I mean, with athletes – I'm not considering myself an athlete, but just in professional sports, like, trash talking is the thing. I mean, you ask all the guys that step away from basketball, NBA, hockey, whatever it is, what do they miss the most? And it's being in the locker room, trash talking with the guys. Like, that's why I love it. I mean, I get that we go out to Whisper Rock and it's just from the time the tee goes on the ground, it is nonstop chirping, whether I'm winning or losing. Our boy Todd I'll Martin's in that. I, in mean, that. Like, he, I mean, he didn't shut up until he took a five minute nap on the ride home. Like we had a bunch of drinks on the course and it was probably 40 minutes back to our hotel. And like, he's just like, even when we get in the car, he's just talking about nothing. Like, it's just like, it's easier to ignore. Like, frankly, it's like, oh, whatever. Just shut up and just on we go. That would um, be crazy. And then he took <laughs> a, like a five minute kind of like drunk nap on the ride home. Mm -hmm. And it was just peace and quiet. Like nothing was happening. I don't know. Isner was on his phone behind me. I was on my phone, which is in the Uber. And then he wakes up and he says three different things that are on three different topics. And then it's just full go again, all yeah. the way through dinner. Until but, I said goodbye to him. But how bored were you for those five minutes? No, I was psyched. I mean, I think one night I looked at you during I dinner. Was I was like, oh, you're annoying. I, just, I was like, just constantly, and I was like, you're annoying. Um, yeah, I mean, you make it eventful. You make it fun. It's you're, it, you, have a, you have a good angle on it because, I mean, ex-pro, um, obviously, you know, you say I'm not that – you're unreal watching you hit a golf ball around the course like you have perfect control all over I mean you hit a three wood for like 267 to like four and a half feet um but I made the pot I'm sure he made the pot yeah I think he did so it's crazy <laughs> three he holds it up um <laughs> but you're coming from that at lens and you're like oh you guys are coming into my field my realm and you want to gamble it's like well we're just like amateurs trying to make a go at this thing and so it is tough when you're just a pro like you've got that level of game and then yeah I like Sometimes I hit it good. Sometimes I hit like shit. And I really don't know what's going to happen. That day. And you're just, here, here comes Cole. Yeah, you're coming to my Well, let me tell you know, guys this. On vacation hitting a golf. Yeah. Because he's not making this very, he make, he's making me sound terrible. He popped off. Good. Lurch popped off and said, oh, really? You want to take it to the tennis court? I said, listen, I don't try to step in your arena. You're trying to well, step I'm just in this trying to take it to another so This game. is what I meant. Like, we didn't get the full picture. From yeah, I, like, <laughs> all the hockey guys are the same thing. Like, oh, let's get you out on the ice. I'm like, I don't want to go on the ice. You guys want to come to the golf course. I have no interest in going in y'all's arena. I'm perfectly fine in this one right here. <laughs> you asked him to go to the clay lurch? Like, come on, man. No, no. I just asked him to play a different game. Something like, with both Just as douchey as that he made is, himself. That is the most lurch thing to ever come out of this podcast. Where it's I'm like, glad oh, we got oh, you that talking out. shit? You want to play tennis? It's oh, like, right, yeah. Oh, you just hit one 265 to four feet? Let me take you to the clay. You want to play singles or doubles? You want to play paddle ball? You want to play squash? Like, Pickleball? Pickleball? That's the one I was looking for. Sorry, lurch. Oh. No, no. That's totally fine. And I, it was like, yeah. And now, you know. I, I definitely asked him to play. I think Isner told him, <laughs> so like, good. I'm a good, like, rackets player. But I was like, yeah, we'll play another game where we're both amateurs. And then tennis came up. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so Colt's unreal at golf. And so, yeah, I mean, he kicked my ass and Isner's ass every which way. He was actually playing with PM. It wasn't T Todd Martin out of Peter <laughs> Millar. wasn't his best weekend of golf. But it didn't matter because what did you shoot under par both days? Uh, the first day, I don't know. I don't think – I think I shot – 
one over. The second day was windy as shit. It was Grove. windy and it was tough. We played it from back too. It's probably yeah. seven thousand or maybe sixty eight hundred. I don't know. We no, played it. I yeah, it's over seven thousand. It yeah, it was hard that day. It was. I will say though, like we, you know, like we are all competitive though, so it is funny to oh, hear like when, like beforehand. I imagine the the vibe on that whole thing of like going to the arena and I'm just here on vacation to hit some golf shots. I imagine pre round that was a very different vibe because you're like, Oh, I'm getting shots. Like I'm, pre- I can play a little bit. Like part of our brain thinks we can like do it. We can play, we can like navigate our way around. We can have a good round. Golf's got this cool handicap system and we can like be competitive athletes and like they under, and then after it's like, well, I was on vacation. Like he played golf for a living. I got yeah. fucking killed. Like of course I got well, killed. So first, first tee of the first day, it wasn't so much. It was just like, yeah, we're going to go play a round of golf and just like, you know, see how it goes. I've never played with Colt before. I had no like prior understanding of how he goes about the round. And so like that didn't really come out that day. But then on the second day, I was like, I want to beat this fucking guy so goddamn yeah. badly. I don't care about him being like a pro. I'm getting my shots. I want to fucking beat this guy. But then you just understand like, you know, and you just see it like the range of good shots and bad shots in my game just comes up so much more frequently than his. Like he's never making worse than a bogey ever. And like a bogey is coming out once, maybe twice around. And so yeah, there's a good chance you're just getting beat. Like Isner I'll was like, that. I would argue that Colt is the best handicapped golfer, like in the country, like just play right to it, make a couple birdies. He's a plus three. Like he's, he's, I mean, you're good. You're good. It's uh, like, well, I it's appreciate that. But I'll, I'll tell you this, like I'd never seen you play. I saw you hit some balls on the range and I was giving you 10 shots the first, first day we go out in the first few holes, you hit it great. And I'm like, this is going to be a problem. Like you drive to right, you drove it right down the middle, hit your irons on the green. You hit one to like four feet. And I'm like, Oh boy. And Isner just looks at me and goes, just make him putt everything. <laughs> he said and that. Then, then I figured it out. <laughs> then I figured it out. <laughs> I didn't know he said that. I'm going to give him shit for that. That was your partner? Yeah, that was my partner. I mean, well, I was like, why does he get so many strokes? He hits it great. Like, he hits, you hit it further than I do, and you hit your iron's great. And then he's like, just wait till he putts. I'm like, oh, okay, now I see it. Now I see it. I had some bad ones this past weekend, too. It was like, I was like, Lurch, it's just back and through. It's the smallest stroke there is. It's easy. Yeah, he said all the golf stuff of how easy it is <laughs> all right now let's talk about the stuff that really got us heated which was the bud was was the bud situation <laughs> um i i, I want to give you a chance to you know talk about your side of the story because from our vantage point it seems as though we're supposed to know every single person that's ever stepped on 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 grass on the pga tour yeah so i just assumed people knew who bud collie was but once again like i'm a golf nerd i talk about golf 24 7 365 i mean i have three jobs that are all talking about golf and these guys are my friends but i just assumed most people in the golf world knew who bud collie was considering you know he did something that i think 12 other people in the game of golf have done which was earn your tour card through sponsor exemptions without having to go to q school and i just found and listen, I like to give you all shit about not knowing anything about golf. It was the perfect scenario where we're at Justin Thomas's house and Ricky's there and these other random people. And we'd been drinking since about 930 that morning and it was about four in the afternoon. And I walked by and I hear, so, bud, what do you do? And I fucking lost it. I was like, this is so perfect. Like the one time you didn't want me to walk by was right then. And I guess that's my fault for assuming I should thought y'all would know who Bud Collie was because I thought no, it didn't player. really like affect me on that level. Like you're chirping me because like, but I was like, yeah. I mean, I'm just asking this guy what he does. Like, I don't know what the hell he does. I don't like. I didn't recognize him. From, so you walking by and then chirping me, which was like your continual chirp. Oh, you're the fourth mic. Oh, you're like you, <laughs> you don't told me you're the fourth well. mic. <laughs> I probably heard that five hundred <laughs> times from you, and then. Like there was just like more of the same. So that was like another like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, I don't know who Bud is. But he is, I mean, he's the nicest guy in the world. See, I think we would argue like we know of Bud Colley. Like there's no yes. way that we don't know who Bud is. It's just, I think Street like. Close. It, not right. Like, so, like if you saw like, I don't know, fucking, I just watched the Yankees last night. But like Joey Gallo walks by me on the street. Like, I don't know. Like I would just like maybe walk right by him or like Anthony Rizzo. You might not like if he's just in like a hoodie and a t-shirt and then shorts i may not like recognize him like i just in that situation and i know lurch probably should have been like i'm at justin thomas's house these guys are probably all professional golfers Context like clues. it's not like it's not like he was at a fucking cafe <laughs> in the middle of like louisiana just be like what do you do but um but yeah i just thought like 
the idea that like th- then it almost like went into like foreplay doesn't know like that's just like that's our mo is to not know anything in the game of golf which is like if we don't know who this guy is in street clothes that has nothing to do with like us and our enjoyment or our our connection to the game of golf like or even just like no- our knowledge of the game of golf like wouldn't you agree it's like such a weird thing to like pin on someone for not knowing who someone is in street clothes it was a lot of alcohol involved and just <laughs> a perfect situation of me just continuing to talk shit to lurch and it was it was great i've messed with rigs all the time about this first off y'all y'all debate golf a lot i i see y'all stuff y'all debate you know who should be on the Ryder cup team who shouldn't y'all know y'all talk a lot about the game of golf i just like giving rigs and you guys shit that y'all don't know anything it's just all just part of just trash talking y'all like i said i said this on sirius xm after people hated on me on twitter i'm like jesus christ guys like i said these guys are great for the game of golf like they have brought a whole new audience to the game of golf their brand is unbelievable like i'm jealous of their brand i wish i you know what y'all have done is truly remarkable and it's and it's great people love listening to y'all i mean you got jason day talking about you i mean everyone on the pga tour knows who you guys are and that's so cool because they don't know who a lot of media guys are but they know who the four of you guys are twitter's a high school bathroom you can just write anything on the wall it's just and it's telephone there. it's a it's a game it's right. a big game of telephone too like like uh, riggs was saying before where you guys last episode were trying to convey the shit. To, Cause I don't know Colt that well. We run into each other at events. Sometimes we say hello, but like, I haven't spent a lot of time with him, but you guys have, and you clearly understand his attitude and where he's coming from. But then to try to explain that to me and Frankie on the show is impossible, but having him on now, a lot of it, it makes a lot more sense hearing it come directly from him. Yeah, it's nothing hateful. It's just all fun. <laughs> and, right. I mean, like I said, that's my favorite thing to do. I mean, he saw it like I shit talk with Michael Jordan. Like, I mean, I have no business shit talking with Michael Jordan. Like, he's on a whole other planet. No, uh, like y'all said, I think yesterday, Tiger Woods is about the only guy that should be able to shit talk Michael Jordan. And, but I do it just because it's fun. Right. Yeah, I would say it is like from the, the credibility standpoint, it is always a, a little bit tricky. Like, uh, I agree with that for us and that, yeah, like we don't, our show is not based on fucking analytics and being able to break down shots and being able to break down who's most likely to get there, you know, get through Q school. Like we just don't really pay attention to that. And I think like mainstream golf fans, like the average mainstream golf fan probably doesn't either. But then there are also times like we'll get into it with players for 45 minutes, an hour on the show, or we will kind of break down and get into stuff. And because we've been, exposed to a lot of that like yeah we definitely know a lot more now than we did when we were just purely fans and we know more like when we are walking around events and stuff there's guys and and situations and and stories and little tidbits and insight that we've gotten that like we do know more so I do think like we on some level in those spots like in order for us to relate to our fans it's not important that we like fucking know who Bud Colley is and all the times but I do think in order to appeal to a certain subsect of like players and stuff that there needs to be a degree of that, I think. So like, so I think we're always a little bit caught with like, yeah, no, we know like enough, but like, we don't know yeah. everything. And I think to able to like, to be, to have players want to be kind of our go-to, like Frankie mentioned, like Aaron Rodgers going on Pat McAfee and like, you guys have guys come on your show a lot on the Sirius XM show when things are going on in the news, like for us to be closer to that, I do think we would need to know more of that stuff or at least have players believe that we know a lot of that stuff. So we are caught a little bit in between sometimes, even though we're clearly leaning more towards we appeal to the fan more to, to the player. Yeah, and, and you see it every single week out there on the PJ Tour. I mean, there's barstool gear all over the place, and that's, that's awesome because, I mean, and like I said, y'all relate to a different audience that makes it fun. And my example was going to be Pat McAfee. I mean, I love that guy. Like, I'm a right. huge football guy but I would rather listen to him than most people because he makes it fun, which is what y'all do. And it's what's, that's what Sleaze and I try to do as well. But we also throw in some, I mean, we have, I mean, I play golf for a living, so I have a little bit different, you know, background obviously, but we try to just make it as much fun as possible. We're never going to get to the point y'all are. We're not allowed to say fuck every other word, word, which is really tragic. I really enjoy that. But yeah, Frank, you're bad. Brings about in that the money, sure. man. It, that's it. It's, it's nice. That's the money. Hold, it does. Hold, that's you a secret. Say, that's that's how you get your your brand this big and strong. I mean, you just say the fuck. Argument it, could man. be made. The argument could be made that that is the difference. I, <laughs> being unfiltered is huge, man. I just think I, 
and there's always this talk about doing sports broadcasting unfiltered, like having a separate thing. And I think whenever someone figures out how to do it and do it well, that's going to be the future. Like I, I, you want a guy, I mean, what Bob Minery did, I mean, that's how he got famous and granted, I'm not going to compliment him anymore, but he, he makes it fun. Like that's y'all make this, y'all make golf fun in a sport that's so uptight. Like one of my favorite arguments y'all ever got in was with what y'all call it, old school media or what, what old man, old, old man, man golf. Media. Yeah. Like, dude, that's my whole point. Like if you want that stuff, you can go listen to it. You don't have to listen to Barstool. It's a choice. Like 100%. let them do their thing. Old man media, do your side in whichever way the people want to go. It's fine. There's no right or wrong answer. So we're, that, we're allowed to have that's, both types. that's where I got sensitive about it. Cause I, every time we always hear every week, it's like, well, how do you feel that Jordan Spieth went on subpar instead of your show? It's like, well, if I was Jordan Spieth, I'd want to go talk to someone after a big tournament or as I'm on my comeback to someone that knows me a little bit better and that like you you were a pga tour pro like you are a part you're his peer that is the pat mcafee argument with aaron Rodgers. aaron Rodgers is not going on uh he's not like going on like the 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 joking podcast that you know would probably ask him about his dick size as opposed to like all right like pat mcafee knows exactly the questions to ask him he, and and aj hawk is his um that's who he's doing it with, right? It's AJ Hawk. Yeah. It was his was his teammate. So it's like, yeah, he feels comfortable there. Like these guys feel comfortable around you guys. And I don't know why it's always like a negative from like a golf fans viewer standpoint where they're like, well, you guys aren't getting the guys that they're getting, or like you guys don't know anything about golf. It clearly shows with the players. It's like, why can't you listen to us talk about our shit that clearly is working about like us talk about the universe and then go listen to subpar about like when they break down Jordan Speed's game and his like comeback and all this like that's perfectly like possible to be able to enjoy both things. So yeah. when it comes off as like, all oh, these guys know nothing again, like, and I'm picturing like at Justin Thomas's house, like Lurch is standing there and everyone's laughing at the foreplay guys. It's like, well, Hey man, we're doing pretty well for ourselves over here. Fucking just do it. Not knowing who Bud Colley is like, that's fine. If you guys know who he, like he is in street clothes, like why can't we both exist? So that's the, that's the only reason why I really got like fed up with it. Cause it's, we hear it every week. It's like, dude, we're just going to continue to do our thing. And, and Colt's going to keep killing his thing. And, like, you can enjoy both. There's no there reason is. why you can't. Listen, there's guys that go on y'all's show that right. comes on our show. Like, golfers, they want to grow their brand. And obviously, and I mean, those are two different biggest... shows, right? Like, those are two, two totally different yeah. interviews. Yeah, I mean, ours is joking around, but there's also some serious part to it as well. Right. And you can go on what – I mean, when you get invited to go on one of these, like, listen, I have my own podcast. There's a no-brainer when y'all ask me to come on y'all's. I'm going to do it. Like, this helps me out as well. Like, there's no doubt more right. people get to know who I am now. Like, why wouldn't I do it? Right. All right. I got on a pretty cool hoodie right now, boys and girls. It's from Peter Millar because it's uh, fall. You know, it's getting a little chilly out there. It's getting a little nippy. Weather might be a little bit more unpredictable. Like, we were abandoned. Everybody bought cool Peter Millar hoodies. You can go to petermillar.com slash foreplay. Check out all of their cool, um, you know, top layer pullovers, crew necks q-zips hoodies all the good stuff i got a couple cool ones over here right now actually i'll show you guys yeah finding out about the or not finding out about it but buying the lava wash hoodie um at bandon has really changed my life i'm trying to oh that thing looks really nice Riggs. yeah that's a crew, crew neck i'm a big crew neck guy that's look nice. at this crew neck oh my god how good is that the boy yeah, oh yeah what do you got hold you that got plastic there? a little closer to the mic I'm just I'm letting people know it's an it's an audio experience. I'm about to open up a Peter Millar bag. Let's see it. What do you got? Ooh, we're giving them an audio experience right in their ear. Look how nice yeah. this thing is. Brace yourself for this fine audio experience. Is that a, oh is that yeah, Frank. Oh yeah. It's a nice green. It's a it's the ultimate autumn like autumn fall quarter zip. Like this just goes with the times. Like I'm about to play. Well, I can't right now because I have. a basically a broken wrist but these colors just look nice with all the changing colors of the of the trees it's beautiful agree more it's beautiful um it's a beautiful company so do yourself a favor we're showing you a lot of cool items right now or we're just describing them because it's a cool audio experience but you can check them out for yourself by going to for uh i'm sorry petermillar.com slash foreplay check out the crown sport outerwear and the full range of peter millar apparel again they've got cool hoodies they've got lightweight layers that you can throw on to keep yourself warm out there but you can still swing so go to petermillar.com slash foreplay right now if i'm just a fan of any of golf in general and these players are going on 
multiple shows. Like if they go on subpar for an hour and then they go on foreplay for an hour, I'm going to listen to both of those because like if same reason I'm a big, like we're all Tiger Woods fans. If Tiger Woods goes on anything, I'm going to listen. I'm not going to be like, oh, Tiger Woods already did a uh, interview. So I'm not going to listen to like any of it. Like (laughs) you're going to hear different stuff and just hear more of it. And you're going to get different stories. You're going to get stuff. So that stuff, um, like who gives a shit about that stuff? And we get it a lot too. When like, when we'll really go in on Bryson, right, on the show. And then we'll get a few emails or tweets that'll be like, man, I really think what you guys said is probably going to discourage him from coming on in the future. Like, you should really rethink that. And it's like, well, no. Like, if our success is based only on catering to people so they come on our show, then we are not actually doing our own show. We don't have our own show. We are just doing what we do so that we're relying fully on other people coming on. Like, we don't really give a fuck at the end of the day. In fact, like, if we could do a whole show that got as big as it could in the world without us ever needing one guest ever, that'd be fucking awesome because then yeah. we're just as right. entertaining and as big of a draw as anyone else. So it's always, when people react that way, it's always really bizarre because it's like, no, that's like, our secret sauce isn't just sucking Bryson DeChambeau's dick so that it'll come on our show. Like, that's not it. Our secret sauce is actually saying fuck every other word, which Cam Swan, who emailed us on January 28th, Frankie, if you remember, I recorded these stats. He said, Riggs 27, Frankie 46. This is how many times the two of you said fuck on today's podcast, January 27th. If we're adding new words to stop saying, please consider adding fuck to the list. It's almost impressive how often you guys say it. I am trying. I'm, I'm consciously trying to think about how many times we say it. It's just like when I go on these tangents and these rambles and I run down these mountains, it. I lose it, man. I'm just yeah. – I'm it's literally great. Jordan – I'm Jordan Spieth running down that little hill and I'm about to fall into the lake. Like that's exactly what my brain feels like. It's, no, but you go back to the, the guest thing, like, and I agree with you, like, as a former player who has done some interviews and stuff, it's like, listen, most of the media, like, you sit me down for a 20 minute interview, I can probably tell you what 90% of the questions are. And that's what yeah. makes y'all great. And that's what we try to do over at subpar is listen, I want to ask guys questions that they don't, they don't already know what they're going to say. Like, I want them to be caught off guard. Nothing like that's going to get them in trouble or anything like that. I just want to take a different angle. And I think that's why if you had Jordan Spieth on y'all show and then we had him on us, you'd get two hours of totally different conversations, right. which makes it fantastic. And one other thing about the Bryson thing at the Ryder cup. So Bryson went to SMU where I went, his mom comes up to me. I believe her name is Janet DeChambo. And she's like, Hey, call Bryson's mom. And I hadn't met her before. I was like, Oh, good to see you again. She's like, I love listening to you. Except when you get my son shit. And I just started <laughs> laughing. I was like, listen, I mean, be fair, Bryson brings a lot of it on himself. I'm just gotta kind of call it like I see it. Right. I totally. bet I bet Janet yeah. does not listen to this show. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, Bryson's you know a son of her mother. Then you know they they probably hold some grudges in there. So that that all makes perfect. But we had That's Bryson totally on our it. Sirius XM show yesterday, and he couldn't have been more fantastic. He was so nice. And it's amazing because we've had 90% of the times we've had interactions with him, or maybe 100, we've actually had real interaction with him. He's been great, but he just doesn't like when we react no. to some of the things he does that we haven't loved. And he'll DM us saying he's never going to work with us again, which is, you know, it is what it is. Well, then don't do those stupid things. <laughs> or we just we do because to. that's who we are. We don't care. No, no, no not that's y'all, like, him. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, him. I was going to say, like, Cole, oh. this is our whole fucking ethos no, no. of what we were just saying for the last 10 minutes. When you yell at a camera guy saying, don't ruin my, for filming you, for saying, don't, like, he's doing his job. Like, what do you, what am I supposed Literally. to do? Literally. Like, but it is tough. Like, we, I remember we, with JT, and JT is the, the drunk FaceTime thing that you mentioned is very funny because I, I, like, I think that's become part of the move now, especially us. Like, we're in this world where we know people that we never, ever, ever, ever thought we would know. And, like, Cole Swindell is one of mine. Like, when I get drunk, I'm with people. Like, I'll FaceTime Cole, and he always picks up, and he's always great. But another one was, like, when I go on a golf trip, I was at Aaron Hills, and I drunk FaceTime Justin Thomas coming down 18 because he hit the shot. He made eagle on Saturday, shot his 63, all that. And um, he didn't pick up. We were right by the plaque. And then we were walking off 18, and he FaceTimed me back. And I picked it up, told him where I was, coming off 18 at Aaron Hills. And he just goes, oh, 18 at Aaron? That hole's easy as fuck. And <laughs> all the all the caddies and everybody were around, and they all heard that. And that's like caddy lore now. They're all like, JT is the best guy ever. He like FaceTimed us back, said that this hole's like easy as shit. Uh, and everybody talks that bet. So I very much related to the MJ thing. But on JT and being in like the out. circle in the morning. Pause for one second. Sorry, I got signed. Oh, this. you got your delivery thing? Yeah. He said he had a delivery coming. I told him it's fine because we stand up a pee in the middle of the show all the That's time. That's true. Yeah. Which is very accurate. 
<laughs> you guys ever heard the term uh, "my teeth are floating"? Oh my god, dude! No. The w- weirdest but before term- you do, I gotta leave here in a second to catch your show tonight. You could be a couple minutes late to the show. <laughs> no, but to get a ride out of here, I gotta. Uh, that's how, uh, so that's how I have to get up. Um, Trent in our latest episode, which shout out to Garrett. Shout out to Jake. Shout out to uh, Brendan Jones, and shout out to who else was on that trip with us? Avery was on Avery, the, on the yeah. trip with us. Um, fantastic series. It's come to an end. The Northern Michigan series is on YouTube. Um, our latest episode at Bailey Farms was a great one. I mean, we introduced this game, which we could talk about a little bit more either today or on the next show next week. Um, sinkhole. We played sinkhole on the beach at uh, Lake Michigan. There are beaches on lakes, right? Is that a dumb question? They're just considered yeah. beaches. Yeah, okay. There's beaches no on problem. rivers. There's beaches on all kinds of stuff, Frankie. Okay, I didn't know if it was just like, you know. Just I don't know, ocean. though, if you could call a beach on a pond. Could you say okay. that? I would call that like a bank or something. You call it a all bank? Right. Yeah, yeah, Sorry yeah, about that. Bank. Colt, can you have That's a right. beach on a bank, or is it only to rivers, lakes, and oceans? I'm a sorry, on, on a, a pond. pond. A beach on a pond. Uh, a sandy yeah. area around a pond, is that considered a beach? You call that a beach? What else are you going to call it? I think you're right. I think it's a beach. Yeah. Cole, have you ever heard the expression, my teeth are floating? <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn, I thought I was going to score a point there. So we're, well, we're, we have this video. It just came out on YouTube, and, and we're sitting in the cart, and he goes to himself, Trent. He goes, uh, my teeth are floating. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? He goes, oh, you never heard that? It means I have to take a piss. It's, first of all, ah. the, most disgu- the most disgusting saying of all time your like body's filled with urine so much that that's, your mouth that's your what mouth, it is. You, your you mouth has so, so much urine in it, it that, that your teeth are floating all your body no, that your your no. teeth are floating so you're, 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 that you use that in like in just like public vocabulary no. hey i have so much piss in my mouth that my teeth are floating <laughs> what the fuck yeah, are you talking about i don't know how we got it's on a, this it's a thing people say god for that to I come had a lot from of... you too trent like iowan like sweet little trent to be filling up your mouth with urine and your teeth are floating around because you uh, i mean when you on. when you talk it through like that it sounds disgusting but if you just say my teeth are floating that's I said the kfc some... last night he started gagging he was like that's just <laughs> just the idea you just you someone said that their grandpa grandpa said my molars are floating and like that was just too oh, much man God. some people people also were saying that they say my out my like my eyeballs are floating let's just say you gotta take a piss so yeah. Yeah. Really i like go. i like the phrase I like the frames. Hey, Frankie, can we get some frames around those flags? I mean, fuck. Oh, I know. Well, the problem is, well, I'm moving out of here, but the problem is that it's a slant. So, like, if I was to frame it, it'd be on, like, a weird angle. Okay. You know what I mean? I, they're enough. dangling. I, um, I agree. I dude, messed I got, them up, though. I got a couple flags framed. It's crazy expensive. Uh, yeah, yeah framing is super expensive. What are, you, what are we I mean, talking? Dude, it was, like, uh, probably, like, two or 300 bucks each one. Yeah, dude, I get my jerseys the guy signed. Frame and they're 350 400 bucks. It's fucking absurd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. It's gonna be ten dollars. It's a piece of pl- Frankie. You can't He's- buy a house anymore. You gotta buy frames. Seriously, <laughs> cross country mortgage, change the loan. We're I don't know frames. where we were in that interview, dude. Those. So, this thing was sitting. This was oh, the one wow. that was on my desk. This is the oh, Tom yeah. Brady, yeah, Peyton Manning, Tiger Woods. Phoenix one. I took this up there to get it framed you know and i was like going through and they're like yeah we can do this one with that and i was like that's great and then they rang me up after it was like 270 dollars or something yeah. i was like it's absurd uh what you get one at target for like 12 bucks i yeah, believe we were talking oh no go, go ahead no you go ahead oh, i thought i was gonna jump back into it. i think we were talking about justin thomas and i believe Riggs was going towards that we used to have a somewhat rocky relationship with him yeah yeah because when he had the honda classic you know mm-hmm. uh, you're out of here buddy incident you know, we were pretty hard on him. Dave tweeted, I think, that he should get heckled when he's buying groceries. And we were pretty hard on him that, like, for the whole year. And then we ended up having him on the show. And a few months after that, we were at the U.S. Open. And um, we were walking during practice round. And, so, and he introduced me to, like, his mom was walking along with him as well. So I'm like, man, a few months ago, we're just fucking roasting this guy all the time. Now you're here and his mom's like, oh, like, what do you do and where are you from? And we're, like, chit-chatting about, like, restaurants they're going to go to and stuff. And so that does make it where you're, you know, you're not as distanced from stuff as y- you would either, like, like to be or once you get on a human level, it becomes way harder to talk. But I will say we're very, we're very public and honest, I think, about the fact that, like, 
we're susceptible to those changes because we're just like, oh, yeah, oh. I met his family. Like, now I love that guy. <laughs> like, we right. do that with every guest that comes on. I mean, I've already bad. done that with I've already done that with Colt. Like, I was like, fuck subpar, <laughs> fuck Colt knows. I like now I want to grab a beer with him. Like, if you beers. just come on the show, beers. And now if you come on the show and you beers. teach us and explain to us the situation that we probably got mad at. And then you show us that you are a human being, which you are doing right here today. It's a simple, like, how could we not, like, change? Our, like, we're human beings. Like, you're allowed to have different opinions and, and you're allowed to sway your opinions based off of, like, experiences. Like, I now see where you're coming from. I think, like, it's completely honest and it's completely acceptable to be able to talk shit on a golf course. It's completely acceptable to be able to give Lurch shit, especially when he's challenging you to the clay and you didn't come off as much of a douchebag as the way that he explained so i apologize for ori originally getting so heated and so sensitive and I, I thank you for coming on the show and clearing it up no dude first off it's an honor to be on here but i i definitely accept your apology you know i wanted to hate Riggs before i met him i mean here's the guy he got this huge podcast you know we're starting this podcast we're trying to climb up the rankings and all that and be as big as there is and we can't pass you bastards ever so i wanted to hate Riggs, and then I mean, I pretty much do hate Riggs, but I just tolerate him because he's, you know, sucked up to Connor Trias so much that he's, he's got his bodyguard around him at all times. Smart move, by the way. Smart, smart very smart. Listen, Big very smart. smart. If you well, want, have to you guys ever played together? Have you and yeah. Colt? Oh, Colt and Riggs. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have out at. We Whisper were Rock. actually. You know, there's a there's a rule at Whisper Rock. You're only allowed to play six times a year as a guest. Well, apparently Riggs thinks that's six times a month. He <laughs> breaks it. <laughs> since he's he's I friends do. with the owner's son, he doesn't ever get in trouble for it. Colt's like the one trying to tell on me, too. He's calling, like, the membership director. He's like, I think this is Riggs' seventh round. You might want to check in on that. I saw something on Instagram. Colt and I were actually partners. We rode around together. And I think yeah. we cleaned out that day. We cleaned everybody out that day. Pretty typical around Whisperock, you know? Boys, it's good to see you. Colt's good to see you again. I got to catch a ride to make Trent's show tonight. So uh, I got to I gotta hit this the is, dusty trail. This is the show you're losing to in the rankings. We got a guy who just leaves to go make a train <laughs> mid-interview. Unbelievable. That drive you fucking you crazy. <laughs> I look Dude, forward all to right, seeing you on the show. Bye. All right, I'll see you there, buddy. Like goofy hats on again, too. Yeah, He's I thought he put a. He laughed. How about the fact that Trent's about to go do a live show in front of like 400 screaming women in a bar? We don't know what the number is. It could be 400. It could be a thousand. I don't know how big this place is, but he's gonna walk out with a piece of luggage, and all women are gonna go. They're gonna go crazy for him. That is fantastic. How? The, by the way, yeah. I I have a question. How did you get that gig, Trent? The, be, the luggage guy gig? Yeah, on The Bachelor and Bachelorette, all that. Great story. Great I just story. tweeted it into existence, essentially. But, like, so they have, I don't know if you want to hear the whole story, but basically when they go on these two-on-one dates during The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, they wheel out the two pieces of luggage for each person that's going on the date. So when they get eliminated, they don't get the rose, the one person stays, then they have to leave. And when that person leaves, they don't get to go back and get their luggage. They have a luggage person come in and grab it and take it away. And for the longest time, it was just like a person on the staff. They, basically, anybody they could grab to go do it would do it. And I, like four or five years ago, was like, I want to be the person who comes in and pulls the luggage. And I just tweeted about it relentlessly over and over and over again until it got into the right circle. And they were like, hey, if you can get down to Lima, Peru in the next week you can do this they expected me to say no way i'm not going to do that i had to get a passport i had to do all this stuff to jump through all these hoops got the passport went down to lima for 30 hours pulled the luggage and came back and it was the it was a dream come true that's the shortened version of it i love that that's, that's basically what happened <laughs> that's your dream i love that, that is his dream probably the most confused guy in the world right now which is sam burns who just joined the show and he, has he doesn't know whose podcast he's on yeah <laughs> what is happening yeah it's sam how about you text me back you asshole you didn't text me oh well, i i can't remember which Doug, number Doug, your new one since yeah you got big exactly time on me. No text. what a moment what a moment we have Sam's, sam burns who joined we've got colt nose of subpar podcast sam doesn't know what the fuck's going on is he on he's good just jumped in he's got like shred's talking about luggage in peru yeah. or something he's like what the they, what the they traded lurch to subpar for me and some cash <laughs> oh my god i'd take that in a heartbeat <laughs> i'd give all the cash how much cash all the want? cash <laughs> <laughs> i'll sell this goddamn house <laughs> um, all right, Colt. Well, everybody go check out Subpar. Check out, uh, you know, you and Sleaze on Sirius. We very much appreciate it. Good luck on CBS, and I'm, I'll probably see you, like, tonight. So, you know, we'll figure it out. Good, good choice. Let me know where you need a reservation tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Colt. All right. Thanks, Bye, Colt. Appreciate yeah. it, man. See you, Sam. See Bye. you, Colt. Bye. Home security. 
folks. I'm talking about Simply Safe. Now, I went and visited my family last week. It was lovely to see them. Um, my nephew, my niece, my sister-in-law, my sister, my parents, my brother, everybody, just seeing the whole family. You want to protect your family, obviously. You want to protect your home, obviously. Um, but you want it to be simple. You don't want it to be some extremely complicated, disastrous situation that you're going to get wrong because you got other things to focus on in life, like your work or your family or whatever. Simply Safe. All right. They are the system that U.S. World and News Report, it's actually the other way around. I flipped those U.S. News and World Report names best home security system of 2021. They've got their new wireless outdoor security camera. It's got an ultra wide 140 degree field of view. Is that a lot of degrees, gentlemen? That's a lot of degrees. It's 140 of them. So you can keep watch over your entire yard. It has a, a 1080p HD. Is that a lot of P's? Yep. It's 10. It's 1080 of them. Which is a lot. Seems like seems like a lot. That's a 1080 P's of HD resolution with an 8X zoom. Feels like that's a lot of zoom. That means you can zoom in and clearly see things like faces and license plates to capture critical evidence. That's a little bit creepy, but that's kind of what you want to be in the creepy business when you're trying to capture evidence. Um, it has an easy to remove rechargeable battery. It doesn't need an outlet. You can go anywhere on your property with it. Uh, to learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash foreplay. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, that is simplysafe.com slash foreplay. Go check out simplysafe.com slash foreplay right now. All right. That Holy is funny cow. stuff. You probably feel like you just walked into a tornado or something. I'm like, I'm just sitting here listening. This is great. I don't even know what I'm listening <laughs> to, but I'm just going to sit here. Would have been all someone... time if Sam actually um, like ignored Colt's text to go on his podcast and he came on here. Like Maybe he told him, like, hey, I'm actually busy at this time. Like, imagine that would have happened. Like, th- like, that was pretty risky, the fact that we had another guy join on when we had a competing, competing podcast on at the same time. Yeah, I didn't know the uh, hopping on two minutes early was going to be um, – I'm <laughs> just going to hop into Trent rambling on about something in Peru. I was the luggage that guy never, on The Bachelor. That's never oh. happened before, by the way, which is incredible. Yeah, Are you a Bachelor guy by chance? Yes. 100%. Get out of town. Are you really? Yeah. Did you watch Bachelor in Paradise? Yep. What do you think about Joe and Serena? I haven't watched the. Uh, I haven't watched last night's. Okay. Now I won't spoil anything for you. Say no more. Okay. But it's beautiful, and their love is beautiful. Don't That's be a spoiler sweet. right now, Trent. I figured not... that you might be because I know boys with Scotty Sheffler and Sheffler and Trent go into Bachelor Talk uh, like they're old friends from 1995. Yeah. We, uh, where was that? I think it was Memphis. We had a house. And uh, that was when Greg and whatever her name whatever her name was. Oh, uh, who was, what, what was Greg on? What was her name? Uh, Katie. Katie. And Scotty and I were just like, screw her. Like, Greg's our king. Like, we got Greg's back. (laughs) Yeah, he had a tough exit. Yeah, that was brutal. (laughs) Um, So what's up, man? You just won, (laughs) you know, on the PGA Tour. And now you're rolling right into Vegas. Uh, Imagine life's life's pretty good right now. Yeah, I had a tough morning. I took the uh, I took the check and went took it on took it on red and lost. <laughs> so trying to get over that. But uh it nah, is wide it's Wednesday. Good. It's wide Wednesday. It's been good. Um yeah, last week was fun. Playing close to home, which was always nice. So it was cool to have some family and friends there and obviously played well, which just made it even better. Yeah, I mean now you're just winning on, on the PGA tour. So you got in two thousand twenty one, now you got two wins. It's gotta be um with the wraparound season now, it's got to be real, almost like relieving to kick off the year with a W because it just makes everything for the next year way easier. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the thing. Like when you have the wraparound season, you got to play in the fall because there's so many events now. If you wait till January to play, you're so far behind. So it's, it's nice to start the year off like that and you don't feel like you're going to get behind and you can kind of pick your schedule and go from there. Yeah, I remember Rory. I feel like a few years ago, Rory said that he just he had to start playing or mix in an event or two in the fall because when he would start in January, he was so far behind that he'd get screwed. 
Yeah, like if you didn't win right off the bat or play really well, you're just you're way down the list. So I got to ask you because when you were in um, New York at Liberty mm-hmm. National for the Northern Trust, again I noticed you were with um, Scott. You guys had your little crew. I believe you guys did some pizza reviews downtown. Is that right? Oh yeah. We got our very own pizza boy right here, Frankie Borelli. So we want to kind of hear which ones you which ones you tried out, which ones you, you reviewed. You guys out, hit all the favorites. You, you guys went to uh, you guys went to John's Bleaker, right? Yep. Went to Sauce. Yep. Uh, what's the one right around the corner from John's? Uh, Joe's. Joe's. We went to Joe's. I say right around the corner. There's probably 15 right around the corner from there. Yeah, that Bleecker Street <laughs> area um, is insanity. Um, what was your favorite? Like, what were you guys like getting think, full pies? Were you getting slices? We got so after the U.S. Open, we took a red eye to New York for Scotty's birthday uh, before Hartford, and that's when we first had John's and. Uh, we were like, wow, this is insane, like unbelievable. So we go to Hartford, we play. We end up back in New York for – or New Jersey for the playoff event. And we go to dinner, like one of the first nights we were there, we go into the city for dinner. And Scotty and I are sitting there looking at the menu, and like almost the same time we're like, dude, I wonder how far John's is from here. And so we look it up, and it's like a seven-minute walk, and we're like, well, let's just get a little bit of food here, and then let's just go crush a pot at John's. So we did that like literally three or four times that week. Um, and then we went to Joe's, which was good. But I don't know, something about John's, it's just oh, yeah. it's unbelievable. You got to sit down. You got to get it there. You, you sit in those old wooden booths yep. and it comes out piping hot on that mm-hmm. pan. It's, and you're still you, trying to eat it. Yeah, you're still trying yep. to eat it. No, man, it's there's there's really no better pizza eating experience in New York City than eating at John's yeah. Bleecker Street. Um, do you guys do that in every city you go to, or is like New York a, a special trip that you guys usually yeah, pack into I mean, your schedule? New York is kind of on its own in that aspect, but like me and my wife and uh, Scotty and his wife, we went to dinner last night uh, at Catch. Uh, we're staying at the Aria right in the hotel, and so like this week we'll just crush all the restaurants. Um, but like it works out well because my wife and Car- or my wife and Scotty's wife are like best friends. And uh, Perfect. so we go to dinner with them a bunch and we're all foodies. So try to go to the best spots. Yeah. Is that a big move restaurants basically? Cause I mean, you guys are traveling oh, yeah. so much. You're just trying to always ca- check out all the restaurants. Yeah. We always try to find the, the best spots. And my, uh, my brother-in-law is like a kind of does like food blogging stuff on the side just for fun. And so like, he'll always send us these restaurants to try out. And it's, it's a miracle. I'm not 300 pounds. Right, I was gonna say it's kind of tough to like be a professional athlete and then like bake in all of these like yeah. pizzas and big, oh, yeah. like like try I'm to, sure you're going to get like desserts and stuff. Like, yeah, and then try you gotta to go play out. Yeah. yeah, try to knock it out early in the week. So by like Thursday, we're like, all right, I'll try to eat a little more clean now. <laughs> get, the, get the carb loading done. Yeah, what's I your like ru- what's your routine on a on a week to week basis? I mean, you're still. You're obviously a younger younger guy out on tour. You're 25. It's only been a few years. Some guys I know go in pretty late. They know the courses yeah. really well. They've been playing there for decades. You know, what's your kind of preparation routine usually look like? Yeah, um, it's a little different week to week, but it's mostly the same. Like Mondays is usually when I'll do like if I have like a heavy lift that week, I'll do it Monday. Won't play any golf. Um, Tuesday I'll typically play nine, whatever nine. I'm not playing Wednesday in the pro am um practice that day that's probably like the like the hardest day like of practice just of the most stuff and then wednesday like this morning i had a 6 40 program time so got out here pretty early played that nine practice till 11 30 had a little lunch um and then i'm done for the day so kind of dial it back on wednesday just to try to get rested and recovered for tomorrow what's your um do you have any preference on Thursday, Friday tea time. So like a better draw generally that you just like? Um, if any, I would say I prefer late early just because like sometimes it's tough and you go out Thursday morning and you don't play well and then you don't tee off again until Friday afternoon. You are you could be 13 shots back before you can tee off Friday. And that's not really a good feeling. Um, so I typically would prefer late early if I had to choose. 
It's always that's interesting to me because you hear I don't know you don't get enough of it you don't and as a viewer you don't really think a ton about it like you don't you know because you just don't really notice yeah. you're like oh yeah he played whatever <laughs> he just yeah, kind of like played I, when he it, played. Let's just say I go out and shoot even par Thursday morning. Got afternoon shoots seven. He tees off Friday morning and shoots five. He's at twelve, and before I even tee off, I'm twelve shots back. And you're like, well, guess I got to go and make some birdies. <laughs> so that can be a little yeah. tricky, but. What about groupings? Does it matter to you usually like who you're playing with? I know your feature group this week. I believe you're with Brooks and, and Abe. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously, you know, certain uh, people that you enjoy playing with more than others. Like, when guys are really slow, that bothers me. Um, it's just like sometimes you see guys that, are last to hit and two other guys have hit and they don't start figuring out what they're doing until then. I'm like, what have you been doing for the last five minutes? Like you had time to get the yardage. You had time to talk to your caddy. Time, time to pick a club. Like your ball should be in the air when my ball lands. So that bothers me a lot. If you um, want to name, if you want to name some names, you're free to, you're free to say whatever you want to say on the show. I'm sure people, I'm sure people know uh, the slow guys out here, but I think they know. Yeah. Um, you ever say anything to him? You ever just walk by? Like, hey, buddy, maybe uh, let's just uh, let's fucking well, pick I, it up out I, there. <laughs> a lot of times, I'll just kind of like walk ahead and just like they can obviously tell that like I'm rushing them. Um, Excuse but me, at the Sam, same stop, time, stop walking, Sam. Sam, stop walking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like when a, a rules official comes over there and it's like, "Hey, guys, we're putting you on the clock." I'm like, "Why are you putting us on the clock? You need to put that guy on the clock." Like so, then like you don't want to have that happen. Then. The whole group has to rush, and it's just shit show after that. Are there ever any like uh, things said under the breath, and then someone hears like, "What was like?" You know, like, are you guys ever like getting chippy out there, or do you try and just? Um, I think I think it's the I think it's the U.S. Open. They put the the mics in the cups. Um, and I remember it was a, uh, I was at uh, Shinnecock a few years ago. I was playing like missed a putt or whatever, and um, said something, and I. I didn't say anything bad, but I didn't realize there was microphones in the cup and somebody had texted me after and was like, hey, man, I'm glad you didn't say anything bad. I heard everything you said after you missed that putt. <laughs> um, so you got to watch out for that. got to watch those yeah. hot mics. Totally. JT yeah, knows totally. all about that. Yeah, no, it's uh, – we, we've – like – I think that we all agreed, like when that happened, that it's crazy. That like, I mean, it's not. It's mo- just. It's not right. Like most sports, you're like you don't have. Like, imagine if you had a, a microphone in the dugout of a baseball game. I mean, they yeah, had like, one on the other day with that pitcher Robbie Ray of the Blue Jays going back and forth with the head coach of the Orioles, and yeah. the stuff they were saying was insane. Like, I mean, oh, they were yeah. cursing each other out, calling each other fucking pieces of shit, <laughs> pitch the fucking ball. He's like, "You shut the fuck up!" Like, that's yeah. just that's the that's just for one second the mic just happened to be on. <laughs> Imagine yes. the last hundred years. Oh, there's no, I mean, there's no telling what's been said. Like, people knew everything that was said in sports, just in general. It'd oh. be it'd be bad. Just the if same people time. knew what was said in a, in an office building or uh, right. uh, at an insurance company, at a right. doctor's it's a, office. It's like, same it's, thing it's everywhere. Life. It's yeah, life. Why, exactly. why do we always say like sports are not allowed to be life? That's the part right. that drives me crazy. It's, it's life. It's a, it's a job. They're, they're human beings. Are they not? A, like, I, I get like you guys are role models and like there's all that stuff, but you're allowed to be a human. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and the thing that like sets a bad example is like, oh, if, if you're going to be a whatever a pitcher in the MLB you have to act a certain way you can't say this and that it's like you're setting a bad example for these kids they're like oh I can't be myself I have to you know act a certain way now obviously you want to set a good example and all that but I mean you got to be real too yeah they can't like go out and try and get you guys that's the uh, that's right. what's nuts like the, yeah, the mics protect, inside the holes are a little tough <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta protect the guys yeah um, so aside from golf, like you like watch a lot of sports. I know LSU guy. So, I mean, I'm sure obviously uh, college football is massive for you. Yeah, it's, it's massive. Um, it's been tough. It's been a hard, uh, hard last year and a half watching our yeah. team. Um, just, it's hard for me to understand how, what the team we had two years ago to what is going on now. It just it doesn't really make sense. Like we had probably arguably one of the greatest football teams college football teams of all time to now we're going to go four and seven or four, whatever. And I mean, how does that happen that fast? So, yeah, 
No, yeah, it's uh, you wa- let's look at a team like Alabama that's able to have like the su- the sustained success, and we have our producer Jake Bass over here who's probably just massaging himself underneath the table right now, just calming we himself. Talk, we talk well, but highly about uh, Alabama, but it is amazing when you see these. I mean, it's not like a shot, like it's not like a shooting star team when you talk about LSU, but like you're. Well, that team was dominant. They were they right. had star power. They had national celebrity status type players, and then all of a sudden, it's like no one's even thinking about them. It's amazing how fast that can fall off, especially in like a recruitment type yeah. sport. When you think about it too, like think of how many like um, assistants Saban loses, like coaching staff every year. There's so much turnover. Those guys are getting offered head coaching jobs and OCs and all over the place, and they're still just maintain the level they do. It's really impressive. Jake, what do you think about this? You like this? I am ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, From what would class. you say is wrong with LSU if you had to uh, give your input as an Alabama diehard? Um, I just don't think Coach O is a good coach. Like, I think he's a good recruiter, and he had, like, one of the best teams ever. But, like, for anyone to say that he shouldn't be fired, like Gene Chizik won a national championship and then was fired, like, a season and a half later, like, LSU is like a premier school. They're going to get their guys. And like at the end of the day, like they have the four and the five stars and like those kind of mm-hmm. players. But if you don't have a, a leader of men like a Nick Saban or like a coach smart or, <laughs> yep. or like, you know, Urban you know, Meyer. the guys like that. Or, <laughs> does, anyone, does anyone know how many rushing yards we had in the first half against Auburn? No. Negative five. Ooh. You're gonna want that number to That's be a, higher, Sam. That just doesn't get it How, done. It's got to be like it's got to go the other way, actually. Correct. <laughs> so that was that was tough. Does that affect you? Because uh, you are, I mean, you're born in Louisiana. I mean, does, does that affect you like during college football season? Like, are, do you notice that like you're yes, you're hundred percent. Like on the, yes. you think it affects you on the golf course because like that would happen to me. I'm such a big New York mm-hmm. Islanders fan. It affects my life and everything else I do. Like, I, it bleeds into. Yeah, my life. I mean. Especially like I'm out there, Travis, my caddy, and we're talking about that's pretty much most of what we talk about on the golf course. It's football right now. And I'll just start going down this rabbit hole of like <laughs> what I think we need to do, why are we what's going on and next thing I know I'm like, Oh, I gotta hit this shot. What 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 we got again? How far? <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's I, I Something's got to change. I think I think it might be working for your golf game because obviously things are going well right now. It keeps you distracted a little bit, maybe. Not that they're playing poorly, but just the game of college football in general. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it was uh, it was a few years ago when whenever I think it was 2019, we were really good. And I remember I was playing on a Saturday. I was playing terrible, and I was in like 60th. So I go out early, and I think we have an 11 o'clock game, and I tee off at like nine or whatever. So I make the turn, and I'm like, all right, kickoff's about to start. I get my phone out, get my uh, ESPN app up, and I just put it in my yard, put my phone in my yard book and just watch the whole first half as I was playing the back nine. <laughs> That's so good. That's great. Yeah. See, that's, that's so, great. like, for a fan, right, that's almost incomprehensible. It's like that guy, that person when they're inside the ropes is is – off comms like they are not they're on like, the radar they're probably, they, yeah they're probably like this guy's in 60th place and look how hard he's studying his yardage book what is he doing <laughs> first down yes yeah yes. Yep. Let's, let's go <laughs> he just threw his yardage yeah. book on the ground what's wrong with yeah. it <laughs> that's really fun. that's good it's good that you're that into it i mean that's yeah, you know, that's it. yeah yeah it's a that's a fan. You, that's why you that's get fun. it. Oh, by the way, as a fan, I have to credit you. I know you don't care about this stuff, but I woke up Saturday morning, saw you were, I think, three shots back. You were a name that stuck out to me, so I threw like uh, 250 bucks or something on you. I think it was 8-1, to one, and obviously you won the tournament, so you made me a little bit of coin. Oh, wow. Congratulations on the success. There's See, nothing professional athletes – right. I was going to say, that. that's a dangerous path to go down because there's nothing professional athletes care less about. I don't know why. Your, like, betting, your bets or your fantasy team. They just fantasy, don't give I, I, Fantasy, dude. clearly. But I, I just thought – you always think as a fan that the guy's going to be like, oh, I'm happy that I like won you some money. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about that. Doesn't care. No, the best the best is when you're out there playing like in, in the tournament and a guy yells out like, here, here we go, Sam. I got you on my fantasy this week. And I'm going to be like – like, why would you t- like? Why would you even tell me that? Like, you think I really, honestly care that I'm on your fantasy team? Like, that's gonna make me go out and play harder. You think? 
They're like, all right, all right, so, now I'll start playing. Oh, man. Yeah, all right. I'm going to go make this putt for that guy over there. Right. That was the motivation you needed to, <laughs> yeah. to get the ball in the hole was yeah, that exactly. guy saying that he had you in his, like, $1 daily yes. fantasy lineup. Yes. <laughs> I guess in my warped brain, I thought you would accept it as a, like, oh, wow, like Riggs no, really had uh, a lot of Riggs. faith in me. Riggs, I appreciate your support. That means a lot. <laughs> you had confidence in me. Right. Thank that, you. Like, that's, after that's the fact, it is, it is a sign of it's – it's a sign of support. I mean, that's all it is. Yeah, I mean, it's not it like is. he told you the Sunday morning, like, hey, you better go fucking do this. I just put 250 yeah. bucks on you. Or, and he didn't fade me, so that's always nice. Right. Well, he didn't <laughs> tell you when he fades you. I think I should fade myself, though, just playing in <laughs> college football. Right. Yeah, no shit. Um, so betting, you think, with, uh, betting with my heart this year is not going well. Trifecta Nutrition. They are a nonsense organic meal prep delivery company. Look, the worst part about uh, eating, cooking is all the BS that it takes to eat and to cook in your own place. It stinks cleaning. Oh, who's got time? Who's got time for cleaning? Well, you're going to clean dishes. You're going to use, uh, you're going to fire up like dishwashing soap and you're going to, you're going to uh, scrub dishes. What are you? I, some, uh, is, I probably have time to clean, but I don't want to do it. Like, oh, I don't want to act like I'm like, I'm, you know, moving and shaking 24, seven, 365. I have probably enough time to clean, but I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to do no, it. Thanks to trifecta. No. No chance. You can eat healthy, but you do not have to have that experience suck because you can do it with Trifecta Nutrition. All Trifecta's meal plans are created by chefs and dietitians to help people get into the best shape of their entire lives. All Trifecta's meals backed by nutrition and science, which tastes great. They make it easy to go into the best shape of your life to get into the best shape of your life. You don't have to suffer to eat healthy. They're convenient. It saves time rather than having to spend hours meal prepping every week, cleaning, which we don't like, science back nutrition, um, no wasted time with the cooking, with the cleaning, with all the other BS that comes with whipping up a meal. It's just uh, organic. It's never frozen. It's delicious. It's farm to fork supply chain. You can get 40% off. All right. You go to uh, trifecta nutrition.com, use the code four. And you can shop meal plans and get 40% off. Again, go to trifectanutrition.com, code 4, F-O-R-E, and you can shop meal plans and get 40% off. So when you're – so I've always debated this with my teams, but, like, if you're such a big fan, have you ever thought about hedging your happiness? And, like, so, like, you have the biggest game of the year and you just bet on the opposing team? Because regardless of what it's, happens – It's a win-win. It's a win-win. You can't lose. If you're that big, if you're so emotionally invested that right. a win means something to you in that life, then why not go I mean, to the Barstool great... Sportsbook and put money down on the other team? I, it's like, a great you point. know what I mean? It really is. It really is a great point. I just can't do it. Like last year against the Tampa Bay Lightning, I could have done it. Game six, like game seven, I'm sorry. And I, I could have done it. Like no matter what happened, I would have won, and I didn't. Because yeah, you, just you, go, you feel like you're you, doing something. Yeah, you go to hit like – submit and your finger just will not let you click the button <laughs> exactly yeah but i, I want to make that. hedging happiness like a thing i want to i want people to be okay with it because it, yeah it, it, there's only a certain amount of people that can do it that can right. actually like rationalize losing money to win the game like i've got i so i've got iowa penn state coming up this weekend it's the number three and number four teams in the country like i i will i want to be happy regardless obviously i would love it if iowa won but you're saying then I, I just put money on Penn State, and then I'm happy right. regardless. Right. You put a wager on Penn State. Penn State wins. You're fucking so sad. You're so mad that your team lost. And then you check your account, and you're up significant amounts of money because you just happened to place this this wager. There's something dirty about it, though. Right. Because Definitely. When your team okay, so wi- right, right. What if the other team wins and they don't cover? Well, then, then you that's... Hate life. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you start you go on a it's long a walk, Sam. You go yeah. on a long walk. <laughs> yep. Is what happens from then. I think Frankie, I think you love the name hedging ha- hedging your happiness so much that you're trying to make it work. Cuz it's I like a catchy name. I don't I don't think it needs to try and where I think it works. You just have to be able to have the balls of steel to to just just do it and then throw your phone away. Be like Frankie, I get on board with it. I love it. Thank you, Sam. I'm, in. I'm, in. I'm gonna do it this year. I'll I'll I, I'll I'll be in, I'm gonna watch the game in Jersey, so maybe I'll do it for Iowa this weekend. 
Trent, it reminds me of when Dave used to uh, always go in on us for being the boondoggle boys. And finally, we just said to him, like, I think you just love the word boondoggle. And he was like, I do like the word boondoggle a lot. So he would just say it all the time. Right. We were caught on that for a long time. I don't, it Forever. Hurts to, this hurts me to talk about. I should have hedged my happiness last night because the Yankees lost to the Red Sox. But I don't think Dave, speaking of Dave Fortnite, I don't think Dave has ever loved anything more than the John Sterling call. Have you guys seen this last think, night? Uh, oh, yeah. I, he played it. 150 times it's a 25 second clip he played it 150 times have you heard this sam this call last no. night when the, oh my god so the I, yankees I know, had the, uh, I know scott had the yankees last night oh dude know. the yankees Ooh. have this old school announcer that does all these things it's a text message to right field from Teixeira and like all these yeah. ridiculous sayings and last night john carl stanton hits one it looked like it went to the moon. It looked like it went to Rhode Island from, from home plate at Fenway Park. We all jumped up on stream. We went crazy. Turns yeah. out the ball hits the fucking bottom of the wall. It didn't even come close. Didn't even didn't even hit the, the, the halfway point of the green monster. And, and you know, we're all – everyone's ragging on us for thinking it's a home run. And John yeah. Sterling, the, the clip comes out like 10 minutes later on Twitter. He does this announcement. I wish I could actually play it for you just how funny it is. Um, he goes – that ball is hit. It's gone. A Stantonian home run to left field. And, bro, the ball's already at second base. And then he goes, now, now hold on a second. What did I do wrong? And he couldn't believe what happened. I have to pull up this clip. You're going to love this. It's the pitch to Stanton. Drew, there it goes. Deep left. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Out of the ballpark. A Stantonian home run. Now, what, what, did, what did I do wrong? What did I see wrong? He's at first base. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, just, it's as wrong of a call as you can possibly have. I, I don't know that's, if I've ever seen anything tough. like it. I just had to get that in because I did, I wanted to talk about that on the pod today. It's so all wow. time. Sorry about that's your Yankees good. there, Frankie. Oh, Sorry about okay. your Yankees. I know, I know. Um, do you care about a uh, gamble? Like the sports betting going to affect golf at all? Sam, like, do you do you care? Is it going to affect anything in your guys' lives? Like, people being more rowdy, yelling shit at think, you, or no? I think the only thing, only place it could come into like it can be trouble is when like live betting a hole and the person's out there, and I mean, for them to win a hundred bucks and for them to yell at me to hit in the water or something as I'm hitting, like, then they get kicked out. Of course, they're going to do that. Why would they not? So they can win their bet. Like, they don't. I mean. They don't care. Like they're right. gonna win their bet, and they can get kicked out and leave. So like, but at the end of the day, it's like, all right, how do we? Like, I'm all for it. I think it's awesome. It's great for golf. It's just great in general. But how do we protect like the guys out here from stuff like that happening? I will say because the fairway, non-fairway bets, and like greens and regulation are the best ones in golf. So like, right, 100%. that will end up taking golf to the next level like when we watched the masters like we that's all we did we went to the barstool yeah. sportsbook house and we bet every single fairway hit or not hit from like dustin johnson the whole way in and like yeah like yeah i agree that it has well what they do is they do it like a couple holes in advance right Riggs? is that like kind of how they were doing it so it's not yeah so but i think they're gonna try to do yeah. it more real time i think that was more just a yeah, delay and like the yeah but how awesome also is that like you're sitting there and you've got dj to hit the fairway on 10 and as soon as he hits it, he picks up his tee or something, and you just like you're like, yes, I'm so it is, good at this. It is the it's, most fun. It's I, so I, I'd, I'd say of anything that we've done, like doing that live stream at the Barcelona Sportsbook House in Philly with those fairways was the most fun we've had in a very long time. Well, here's the problem here, Sam, is we have these guys on tour, and I don't know if you're one of them, but they do these premature twirls. Right? You hit a fucking shot at a green. It's, maybe you have green regulation bet on the sports book. And Jordan Speed. I see he's a huge, Jordan he's a Speed. Huge okay. Violator. All right. Well, what about the other way around? When Hideki drops his club, do you go auto- automatically celebrate because you know it's still going to be good? Or yeah, right, right, okay. right. I know you, I, we can't right. have these reactions. It's got to be. It has to be the thing. It's got to be tight uniform. Arrest. We need or, uniform reactions. Or when a guy just as soon as he hits it, just gives it the oh the hits, worst hits feeling in the tree. world. Hits a tree and bounces back in the fairway. Oh, yeah, exactly. in the fairway. oh yeah, that happened at the Masters True. with like right DJ yep. did that. We all lost our minds. Yeah. Yep. We had a uh, we had I forget what hole it was. I think it was like thirteen or fourteen. But we had at Augusta we had a Tiger Woods to hit the green in regulation, and for twenty five minutes we were all debating. 
and the sports book was debating if it was on the collar, if it was on the like, if it was on the fringe, or if it was on the green. Yeah. Like the Masters app had said it it wasn't. What was the reasoning? Rigs. Like, Masters said, app had said it was the eleventh hole 11, at Augusta. Yeah. Oh, it was 11. Okay, and we did that. He would have a green in regulation on eleven. So we were like, we all bet that he wouldn't because. It's a left. Yes. So we're like, yes. he has yeah. two options to not basically. If he hits a shitty tee shot, he's like less likely to hit the green. And if he just whatever. And so we bet no. And then his ball was like right up on the edge. And I noticed that he didn't mark his ball in clean. That was it. the thing. That was the thing. But like you can't explain that to someone necessarily who's not into like golf. Right. And right. I was like, this is the fact. The fact is it wasn't on the green because Tiger Woods did not clean his ball. He would always mark and clean always. his 100%. ball. Always. Always. And Always. they ruled it as a green in regulation. And then we literally mm. were like, it was with Penn National, who fucking owns us and runs the sports book. Yeah. And we were like, Dave Portnoy had probably had 50 grand on it or something ridiculous. Yeah. And he literally was like calling them being like, <laughs> yeah, I will burn them. this place to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Oh, that's a bad beat. <laughs> and they ended uh, up like an hour later, I think they ended up changing it. But like. Correcting it. Because uh, wow. yeah, on the Masters app too, it had it that it was like on the green, and we were just losing no way, our minds. There's no way a guy's not gonna mark his ball on the green. It's never gonna happen. Right. Unless Zero he's chance. Seven thousand over par. He's <laughs> but, still yeah, probably he's watching. If he's watching the LSU on his phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> when you're seven thousand over par in a tournament, and you like have no chance of winning it, and maybe you have no chance of making the cut. Like how checked out are you? Or are you still trying to like, are you trying to find it or you just want to get off the course? Yeah. I feel like for me, it's like, you don't want to like disrespect the game, right? You don't want to just be that guy who just mails it in and acts like a little just kid out there. So, I mean, I still try to, you know, you just know, you never know in golf, like one swing, if you're just going to find it, like uh, that's happened. I've been missing a cut by five or six shots and, try something different and it works and you're like, huh, you know, I may have something here and then, you know, make a couple of birdies, still miss a cup and then you have a great week the next week. So like if you do that, you're just, you're lessening the chances of that happening. Um, so I always try to at least give myself the best chance. Yeah. Not like that guy that we interviewed a couple of years ago that tried to shoot the 200 and what do you shoot at 202? Mr. 202. Ugh. 202. Trey. I saw Trey. Trey, Trey you ever done LPGA that? Tour. No, I've gotten close. <laughs> close. Yeah. We're heading the other direction again? now, Sam. What's how many that? times have you broken? How many times have you broken hundred now? Twice. Let's go. Hell yeah, brother! Dude, I watched every one of those. And it was, I mean, it was great. But sometimes I just had to look away. I, I get that review from a lot of people. The putting, dude. Like the putting, I dude. Just, it, was... it just like whenever he would hit in the bunker, I was just like, I know what's about to happen. And I can't watch it. I can't watch him do this again. Did you know that it was going to be a nightmare just like looking at a setup? Like, like, were you able to tell like as yeah, he's approaching the shot, like no chance yeah. this is getting out? <laughs> yeah. Damn. He had the club face so square. Like if you didn't just somehow magically catch the perfect amount of sand and not thin it, it wasn't coming out. Man, I could have used you at Rockville Links on the oh fifth hole, man. Oh, my God. I watched Long that incident. one. I watched that one. Is that the one you went ping pong? Yep. Yep. That was tough. Shot like 104, and he made a 11 on on the fifth hole. It's just 110 not... yard hole. Oh, just oh, couldn't man. get it in the hole. I appreciate you That's watching right. though. What are you? What, are, awesome. what are your thoughts for Trent Daddy as he approaches um, breaking 90 now? Like, what is? What, do you have any thoughts I mean, on how he could do it? Well, I think first off, like you knock out all the four putts, no four putts. And just be able to get it out of the bunker on the first shot and onto the green. You don't have to hit it close. You just get 30 feet, 40 feet. And then if you can three putt it, I mean, you're going to make a, a six instead of a eight. I, do, I need a surefire way to get out of a bunker. Like right now, I still all stand in a bunker. Those, you've seen those infomercials, huh? You can order one of those. I yeah. could do that. Oh, yeah, dude. Like the uh, dinner plate think, fucking um, thing that they got? Yeah. I think, uh, I, honestly, like, you just you just gotta like get in there and get comfortable and just practice different things. Like not everything, not everybody does the same thing out of a bunker, but everybody has a way that works for them. Um, that is true. Getting comfortable is obviously a huge part of it. But we've talked about it on this show before, where if I just go and it's harder in New York City to get somewhere and practice just your bunker shots. But if you do and if you can, if you hit however many you hit, that's more bunker shots than you're gonna hit in the next 
six to eight months. So you got, right. you're so uncomfortable in there is because you're never in there and you never practice it. And then when you get in there, you're like, this feels extremely foreign to me. Yeah. Well, and you've got a lot of scars now from it. So it doesn't so help. Much, so much scar tissue. <laughs> but I mean, literally five minutes, like if you just did it for five minutes, it's not like you have to go hit bunker shots for an hour. It's like five minutes. It's when you say get than... comfortable for me, like <clears throat> we were out abandoned and I was hitting yeah. the wedges like I always do. And Lurch finally looked at me and goes, why don't you just forget everything anyone's ever told you and just do one time what feels comfortable. Like who cares if it's not yeah. like functionally and like, like, you know what I mean? Like technically it's not the, correct, technically the, the right way. And I yeah. just started like nipping wedges. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it incorrectly, but I'm going to feel comfortable. And like, I was yeah. like, I don't think I've attempted that in two to three years. I've every time I've hit a wedge shot, I've tried to do someone else's technique and, and form. Yeah. You know, swing your swing. Swing your but it's swing. It's really fun. Like golf is so interesting in the fact that like a lot of times what you're feeling and what you're actually doing can be s- totally different. It's like somebody you can tell some, somebody like, "Hey, you're taking it way inside," and they're trying to feel like they're taking it outside and they're still taking it inside. Like it's hard for your brain to comprehend. It's like, oh, I'm I'm trying to take it outside, but you're still just taking it dead inside. And it just the feel and what's real is totally different. Yeah, I learned that when I was working with Tillery for the first time in his bay, and he's got all the cameras on you. And he was like, all right, do a half swing. And I would do what I thought was a half swing. He's like, that yeah. was a full swing. And yeah, I was like, exactly. it felt like a half swing. He's like, it's a full swing. And you just yeah. learn. You don't know that if you don't see it. Right. Yeah. So much different. That's, it's, that's a lot of stuff. Is, is golf still fun for you? Like, on, Are you able to just like drink beers oh, and yeah. play with your buddies? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, like for me, I try to – like whenever I'm home, like I try to get away from it for a few days, and then or I'll just go play with buddies and just kind of mess around and just, you know have a couple of cocktails or something and just take it easy. It's, it can be you know out here and you're three or four weeks in a row and you're just grinding, and then you go home, you don't really want to continue to grind on it for another week. So I try to get away, and I like to hunt and fish a lot, so I'll put my clubs up for a while and get away from it november huh? you probably you'll probably take a few weeks off and do a little hunting in november yeah i'm playing this week and next week and then i'll have three weeks off so i'll be in a tree somewhere <laughs> it's fine oh uh, yeah nobody watching yeah. you got that's got to be that's got to be really nice. no hot mics out uh, there no 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 they fucking blow that thing up if there's a hot <laughs> mic out there. <laughs> exactly <laughs> What, my, do you, what do you get from hunt? Like, what is what is what's I've I've never gone hunting. So, like, what would be your selling point to me as to why I should like go hunting? Like, what makes it so much? I think fun? I think one of the reasons that I love it is because I think it's part of it's because like being out here and you're just around people and in front of people and entertaining people and all of that. And then I get to go out there and just be by myself. Like, it's quiet. Like, you're just in nature. I get to watch the sunrise in the morning and I don't know. It's just, it's so relaxing and so peaceful to me. Um, and there's something about just like, like I, I like to practice and shoot my bow a lot and like getting out there and having a chance of, you yeah. know, having a big deer walk out or you just never know. You just don't know. You never know it's coming. Um, so I, that's one of the reasons I love it. It just, I don't know. I grew up doing it. It was something I did with my dad as a kid and, so, yeah, no, I I listen to a lot of Rogan, and he says like uh, when you do it, when you go out there for the first time, it's like some part of you being a human, yeah, like gets like like switched on, like you've never done it before, like it's like yeah. us as humans, like we're that's like how we're like built, that's why we're built is to like right. re- like reproduce and like make our own food is like that's like yeah. th- that's why we are humans, that's why we're here. I mean, I'm not gonna get into a whole fucking talk about like. Nate, uh, oh, you would never the do that. Universe and the brains and why we're well, here. Think, I mean, think about our, like, our ancestors from a long time oh, yeah. ago. Like, they, we they, go. had, they had to hunt for their food. Like, so some of that's still in us. It is in us. Yeah, absolutely. So it is interesting. Like, I, I always, it's not like, like I shit on it, but I've always, yeah. I'm an inside guy. So yeah. I wonder if I ever went, if, it, if something would like click in me and be like, oh, wow, like my human nature like wants to fucking do this right now. Like, you I want to catch You ever come to Louisiana? Let me know. All right, I got you. So I'll say, Frankie, like my my dad's a big like 
he he's on the farm all the time. He's a big hunter and fisherman in Missouri his whole life. And he loves animals more than anything in the world. And that was always, I can see people being like, that's counterintuitive. Like you hunt, you love animals, but he like yeah. puts out salt licks and stuff for the deer. And he's always like, yeah, he works with the Missouri conservation department to like better the environment and the lives for animals. And then a big part of hunting, I haven't hunted since I was a kid, but kind of like Sam was saying, where you get up crazy early at like three or four in the morning, you walk yeah. out there and you got to be as quiet as you possibly can. You're tiptoeing through and then you sit there for like an hour even before the sun comes up. And then you're part of the world basically like awakening and like yeah. things start to make noises. Things start to kind of creep around and you don't know exactly what it is. Is that a deer? Is that a squirrel? And then when the thing that you're actually hunting, if you're deer hunting or whatever, like when one actually appears like you've been there for hours and you've done all this bullshit to get out there. And now the thing is like yeah. happening in front of you and it's yeah. so exciting. It's like such a thrill. And yeah. then it's like, I don't want to fuck it up. Like if you're jittery yeah. or whatever and you're, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, so it's very much a thrill yeah. that you kind of 100%. build up towards. And there, I think there's something else too, like about eating like the, the food that you actually harvested yeah. yourself. Like that's pretty cool. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I eat Chipotle every day, and like, I don't get that feeling. You know, someone. Yeah, you didn't go get the chicken or whatever <laughs> it was. If it was chicken, who knows? <laughs> yeah. By the way, chicken. So, what was the trophy? What trophy you won had uh, Sanderson Farms. Rooster. What was that trophy? What was on there? Big, big old rooster. A big old rooster was on there. Uh, That's yeah. a cool trophy. Yeah. Pretty excited. They're uh, they're gonna ship it to the house. So I told I told Caroline. I said, Are we gonna put this on the, like the dining room table or? Where, where are we going to put this guy? <laughs> so. I like that they ship it to you so you don't have to worry about breaking it on your travels home. You see all these other yeah. things like the, like Morikawa would like put his, his, uh, didn't he put the claret drug on top? Yeah. And like a, home? they had some kind of like hard suitcase or something for he it, right? Put it, he, he, he had put it his overhead carry on bill. like United Airlines. It was like nuts. <laughs> he, you 100% know that some guy had no idea who he was and like, who's this <laughs> jackass yeah. taking up all the space in the overhead yeah like, supposed to put hey, man, sideways could you check this please <laughs> exactly we're gonna have to orange tag that if you can please yeah. bring that up to the front it's like actually yeah, you you're can, not touching this <laughs> yeah you can uh wait in line wait in the 30 minute line to get your checked bag um, yeah the point. i love when they always ask like uh, if you'd like to volunteer to come check your bag you can sit first and like no one goes up there yeah like no, no i'm not doing that have you ever even thought about you guys? I mean, I don't know if you've even been in the situation, Sam, but you ever been on a flight and like they start raffling off like money to people to say, like, if you don't want to take this flight, we'll give you cash. Have you guys ever seen that trend? Or... The, like the vouchers. They'll give oh, you yeah. two thousand dollar vouchers if you if you sit out this yeah. flight. Oh, my yeah. God, dude. I've been I was in Vegas uh, after one of Dave's birthday ex escapades. And I remember he flew somewhere else and I was by myself. And the number got up to like fourteen hundred dollars. I'm like, should I take this fucking thing and just spend one, like, just spend it one more night in Vegas? The problem is that they give it to you in like airline credit, right? If it was cash, yeah. I'd, no, I think everyone would be going up there, especially in Vegas. Everyone. People would be running up there. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, they would be. They would save a lot of money because they'd be like one hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Right. Right. Sort of. Yeah, that guy's never using that again. No, no chance. No, under no under no circumstances. Um, so it is it is Wad Wednesday as we're recording. Do you like? Are you like ra rapidly updating your your bank app or something when this one point two six million dollars that you just won Jeez. comes in, or how's that work? Um, it it, it always comes Wednesday morning. Um, so yes, I did see that it had hit my account. <laughs> All right, I was going to say, that's the look of a guy who's already got it. It is confirmed. That's awesome. Um, what a cool thing. Is, All the stupid so things cool. the PGA Tour does, that's such a – they should promote that. Like, that should be – there should be a, a TV show around Wad Wednesdays. Like, uh, the whole show is just you getting the notification. Because I love that idea. Like, the fact that you guys are just getting it wired to your account on one day is so yeah. good. They asked me in Jackson last week. They had, a like, one of the Happy Gilmore checks. They're like, do you want to take this? And I'm like – I mean, what, I'd like take this to my bank and like go through the drive through and be like, hey, could you put this in my account? Like, what, how is that going to work? You're like, what is this? What is this massive check you're bringing me? 
Like you're no, trying to get it around like there's like a glass divider and you're trying to get yeah. over to the person. Like, yeah. What's going Just on? send that right to my account if you would, actually. <laughs> yeah, you get the little thing and you shoot it up the deal and it goes to him like, hey, this yes. one's fit in your uh, <laughs> fit in the little holster. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. you. you uh, Appreciate it. And more fun. congratulations to, to me, obviously. For sure. Um, that was yeah, definitely. A couple less zeros on exact your same, winnings. But it's... Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, all right, Sam. Well, we appreciate it. We appreciate you taking the time, gearing up for a tournament, even though you, you just said you're done for the day. You're probably just going. Were you eating tonight? Eating somewhere cool in Vegas tonight? Oh, yeah. We're uh, we're going to Carbone tonight. Oh, Us yeah. Us and the Carbone's so, my favorite. Wow. Yeah, Scotty and I were saying it's, it worked out well that we have late tea times tomorrow, so we can just literally eat so much pasta that we just sleep till like 10 tomorrow. Be great. Yeah, what do they got there? Rigatoni there, I think, is unbelievable. Yes. Spicy yep. rigatoni. Spicy rigatoni. They're spicy is rigatoni. Ho ho. Insane. It's insane. Yep. The one in the time I saw is nearly impossible to get into. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard. I remember Dave had like just got started going getting in. Like I remember I went in once with uh my buddy axelrod and i remember coming back home coming back to work with dave i'm like yeah i went to carbone last night he's like i haven't even gotten invited to carbone like it's so hard to get in there but then the one in vegas is like you just walk in and yeah have y'all ever been to a uh do y'all like dumplings like soup dumplings and all that i fuck with dumplings yeah there's a place called uh din tai fung have you heard of that Mm -hmm. no they just opened one in the aria um and we always go to the one at uh there's one in, at Torrey, like right by the golf course. Really? So we're gonna hit that this week. Yeah, it's 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 really good. I just All broke right. that if down. If you like dumplings, I mean, some people don't. No, I like dumplings. Types of dumplings, like dumplings, pork dumplings. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's legit. Okay. Oh, wow, you like got that. us going a little bit. All right. Mm-hmm. You just got Trent excited, man. Trent's like, <laughs> I like right, dumplings. Trent? I mean, come on, who doesn't like <laughs> dumplings? Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. What's your come favorite on. food, Sam? Uh oh, well, I love sushi. Um, yeah, dumplings. Um, you like the real sushi, like, like whenever, sashimi, and like the the whole thing. You, you, uh, like yeah, I mean when it's when it's like the good stuff, you know. Um, but like I, I would be lying if I didn't say I love just like a really good steak, potatoes yeah. too. Would that be your last meal? Be. Like death, death <laughs> row. You, yeah. yeah, just give me like a fat ribeye and like. Some buttery mashed potatoes and just let me go to work. What are you having for drink? Probably bourbon. If I had to pick one. Bourbon my and boys, red wine. My boys are coming into town tomorrow where we're gonna play golf for a few days. They asked they I said any liquor requests. They said bourbon, but like not not blend. So what's like a good what should I go pick up? Anybody got any anybody got any advice? Um just like a like a good like a really good not crazy expensive good bourbons like Woodford Reserve. Um, that was like the only one I knew. I feel like was Woodford Woodford. Yeah, Reserve. that's that's good. Like that's good stuff. And if you wanted to go like pretty pretty nice stuff, go Blanton's. Blanton's. Blanton's maybe is really I'll surprise good. him. I got my I got my winnings from Sam Burns, so maybe I'll go get yeah. some Blanton's. Blanton's. Blanton's it's it's tough to find though, but okay. Knowing you, you'll probably uh, you'll probably be able to get your hands on it. <laughs> All right, so a nice fatty steak with some mashed potatoes and a bourbon last meal for Sam Burns. Mm-hmm. I think Any it's app- strong. What's your favorite appetizer? <laughs> um, Get your favorite color prepared. Uh, it's uh, nice. it's going to be purple. It's got to be purple, right? Depends. 2019 it was. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if they're appetizer. I think like appetizer is a hard question. I want to take that one back. Yeah, There's too many options, right? Come on. Too, too so many. many. All What's right. your favorite well, appetizer? Who the fuck asked somebody that? Well, I wanted to get the whole <laughs> meal. I like, you know, if I'm going to serve this guy like a three course meal, because then I was going to ask him, what's your favorite dessert? Like, what, like, what's your like all time last meal? Sit you down. Then at the end, I'm putting a bullet in your head. I'll tell you what, the hot cookies and cream cookie from Chip City is. Wow. Trent, Trent, put your pants on. No, I was going to say that was so specific that I know it's good. <laughs> Trent, like put your pants on. When you have that down and that ready, it's like, I don't, I've never had that, but now it, I know that it's good. It's, you have to. I mean, it'll change your life. Are you a Especially big sweets after guy? You, after you eat a, a John's 
pot and then walk right down the street you can get a hot cookies and cream chip city cookie oh my gosh so you're a bit you have a big sweet tooth yeah. huh i'm writing that down right now oh yeah big time I think athletes low key have like the biggest sweet tooth. I know a lot of like all my hockey friends. These guys all are like, like Brock Probably Nelson. We will eat. ourselves from it. Probably like he they, like every time I see this guy, he's eating like a, a crazy donut or or yeah. snap or like sending me an ice cream. I'm like, you ever eat anything healthy? But then he's there. You guys are like the healthiest. Like you guys are always working out. Right, they burn it off in no time. Trent and I eat it and we just get tits. Right, I <laughs> or moon face. Moon face. Moon face. Oh. Moon face. I got nothing else for. I got nothing out. No other questions for you. What's like, uh, your favorite uh, form of uh, execution? Any any thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> How do you want us to do it? How do you want us to do it? Uh, yeah. I'll just put a bullet right in the back here. Yeah. Like an electric chair guy, or what do you what do you think? No, just I'm make gonna, it, just make it of quick. mice and men style. I'm gonna let you look out the rabbits. You don't even know what happened. Yeah. There you go. That's good. Larry is that the guy's name? Larry? No, it's Lenny and George. Lenny. Yeah. Lenny. Wow. We're going. Uh, we're going dark quick. Holy shit! Yeah. It only took four That's not minutes. uncommon on this show. Amazingly, if we'd be talking about uh, you know spicy ricotoni at at Carbone, and then all of a sudden it's fucking Lenny and yeah. What's the other guy's name? George. Lenny and George. George. You a big Halloween guy, or are you a big? Are you a big? Uh, are you get you get it swept up in the in the seasons. A big Spooktober? seasons guy. My wife does. I, I, whenever it's this time of year, I'm just ready to hunt. So like, I love this time of year, but. I don't really, I don't really get caught up in the seasons. You got no, you got no costume picked out this year. Not this year. We did, uh, we did dress up. I dressed up as Joe Burrow, and my wife dressed up as the Heisman a couple years ago. That was pretty wow. good. Wow, that's good. That's, that's really solid. good. Yeah, that that looks looks really good. Was it at like a, a place a where a bunch of, of LSU fans were at? Like, was it a huge hit? So uh, we, uh, we did go to a little Halloween party uh, down the street, and Kyle Williams, who played for the Bills, uh, lives right down the street from me, and. He played at LSU, so he thought it was pretty good. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. But it was a good time. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to hold you hostage here anymore with these questions. I'll let you. I'll let you go. All Thanks right, for joining in the guys. podcast in the weirdest environment ever. No, that was <laughs> great. Yeah, that was that, that was great. great. I'm about to text Colt and be like, "Hey, man, you actually never texted me, but here's my response." <laughs> yeah, send him the <laughs> podcast link. Just be like, "This is what I was going to yeah. say anyway." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks um, for coming so- on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Enjoyed it. Yeah, good luck. Uh, good luck this week. T- say hi to the the Shufflers for us tonight. Even though Scotty told right. me to eat shit last time I saw him. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. All, uh, right. all right. All right. See y'all. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate right. it. See you, boys. All right. See you, man. What a nice guy. Just that Louisiana, like slow. Really nice guy. He's slow. Just laid back. At first, I felt like, oh man, I don't know if he's like into this thing, but I think that's just how he is. Like, I think we that's had just... to, we had to actually morph our speed to his, and then once we yeah. did, it was great. Same thing with like Kisner. You gotta just kind of talk slower to him. Yeah, totally. Because we're like wiry, and we're always in each other's face, and then it's like, no, nah, just pump the brake. I think for the listeners, the juxtaposition between like the way we were at Colt's neck and the way he, like, we were all trying to figure that out and then right into that i mean that's like that's like you're you went through a nightmare fucking um uh roller coaster and then it's that nice smooth ending and it takes you right Dude, into that's the, that's playing uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like molasses spilling out your mile that's so good <laughs> that's great uh. Oh, you're going to be That's the laugh I need going into this live show. Panties, <laughs> I need, I need... It's going to be fucking crazy. Yeah. You with the panties, crazy. you're really into that. Bro, because like there's only certain moments where this happens. I said that. It's the it's the Beatles. It's Trent. It's, it's This is what I yeah. I'm I uh, now you Bro, how, often is is gr- no, how often is there a gonna, like, group cry. of women in a in a place to go see a live show where where a, a male comes out and they go crazy for him. Like this is a this is a this is a this is a moment. You're like um who do you, so. all these like who does like my mom love to watch in like daytime TV? Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> like you know that guy. Like he walks out, they go fucking crazy. Yeah. He does his daytime show. People are going nuts. 
That's like you. Like he and that guy wets panties, man. He's they're all there going crazy. They're clapping. They, they they zoom in on the crowd. They're all swooning over him. That's you tonight, man. I hope you have a really fun time tonight, Trent. I'm not trying to make all you right. nervous. I'm trying to gas you up. Lurch is on like that. a train right now. No, trying I know. To, like find you at the show. I love that. I love that he's gonna be there. Yeah. That's... I want to. Yeah. Well, the, I'm sure there'll be a, there'll be video of it, good or bad. If it's if if a pi- I walk Trent, out and you can, can hear you a pin drop, you'll possibly. see that video too. Can we get a photo from your angle of of Lurch if he looks ridiculous in the crowd? Hundred percent. I if I'll see him, I'll be like, hold on. This is going to look weird, but I'm going to take a picture of this ogre right, in the back. Gotcha. I know you're all scared I'll of him, but he's, he's harmless. That'll get a little bump there. That'll get a little laugh. Yeah. That'll get a great laugh. Like You're going to you're gonna warm yeah, up the crowd right, with that. Right. There you go, oh. funny man. Tell a all joke right. up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're still right, recording. Absolutely. Yeah, we're doing are we still a, recording. Yeah, we're coming no? down from the mountain. Of the oh, we are. Slow as molasses. Come on. <laughs> okay. Sam Burns, man. Dude, halfway through, I was going to be like, we got to cut this interview, man. This is just not like he's just not into it. He's just. But then I just realized he, the way he was just slouched on the couch, like that's that. That's just that dude, man. He is yeah, just dude, we were dude. in like, we were in Northeast mentality. We needed to be in Southern mentality. We got there. We got there. Big time. Big oh, time. Your series yeah. of just oh, what's your good. favorite questions, I think, really I got him going, actually. Yeah. I just I I liked him. I, something about that crew, man. And then I actually looked like me and him had had a little back and forth um, during the Northern Trust because he tagged me in that pizza review um, on Instagram. So I had like responded to him and he got back to us. So like I had had some connection with him already. So I, I, something about his I really like that group, man. His group of friends, the Scotty Schefflers of the world, the Sam Burns, like those are our guys. Even though they're probably not supposed to be our guys, like we're not fucking nice people like slow people I'm no and slow. like slow i'm saying he's like the way he fucking talks and we're not like laid back basically no that's the word trend. i was trying to yeah no but yeah, there's, a little, also... there's a there's a little something there with those two even just like there's yeah. like there are there are type of guys i they think. are i they sit yeah there, they i watch agree. football like, they read barstool sports they send like funny blogs to each other they like Watch I mean, DDTG. he remembers shot by shot of Trent breaking a hundred. He's big, huge. He's a huge breaking a hundred. Right. I bet you, Sky Sheffler sees like Dave like go after someone, and he like sends it to fucking Sam Burns, and they like get a quick laugh. They watch Trent in the bunker incident. They're like, look at this guy. It's like horrible. Like yeah. that. That's just our guys. Yeah. It's like horrible. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking like Sam Burns has Christ follower, and then he's got just a line of dead ducks as like his background photo, and that's you wouldn't think that would mesh with us, but it does. It's great. I like those guys. I like Sam Burns. I hope he wins again. I might put some money on him. Boy, did he not give a fuck about that. I just didn't yeah. care. Not even a little bit. It's the same thing. I mean, we love all of our followers. We love every single person that comes up to us in a, in a, in a event or something. But, like, sometimes someone will just say something where they're just like, yo, man, like, that, like, video is totally. hilarious. And you're just like, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Totally. Like, so, like, I get you know, it. I 100% yeah. get it. The second yeah. I said it, I regretted saying it. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I sh- okay, all right, I'm the worst. I'm just the like guy, one of those. Oh, you made money? Uh. I'm just like one of those guys. Like, okay, cool, dude. So, sorry, yeah, sorry about My that. teeth are legitimately floating. God, yeah, mine so too. Gross. Your mouth is filled with piss right now. I got to pee. Um, everybody have a great week. Go check out the Bailey Farms video if you haven't yet. Sim 2 driver giveaway. Pay attention to that. We're going to leave now. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it, hit it hard.